and it is filled up. The capacity here over 100,000. They'll settle in to watch USC 7 and 2 on the season. Started the year with a loss to Florida, but rebounded against UCLA. A mark of 8, 1 and 1, and led by John Robinson. Here come the Trojans of the University of Southern California. John Robinson in his seventh season at USC. And he has beaten UCLA five times in the preceding six years. So the Trojans have made their entrance and will await imminently the Entry of the UCLA Bruins. Hello again, everyone. I'm Al Michaels. Welcome to Pasadena. This one is always a classic. I don't care what the records are going in. It's unpredictable. I think the only thing we can safely predict today is that this game will not wind up in a scoreless tie. Both teams are coming off Steve Martin-like victories last week. Wild and crazy. Here at the Rose Bowl, UCLA defeated Stanford. The final score was 38 to 35. And in Tucson last Saturday night, Southern California defeated the University of Arizona. The final score was 48 to 41. As far as bowl ramifications are concerned, the Trojans, as many of you know, are on probation for the next two years. They will not be going to a bowl game. UCLA has a very slight chance to wind up in the Rose Bowl game on January 4th, 1st. For that to happen, they have to win today. They would also need Washington State to pull off a big upset victory against Washington. That game will start within the hour. We'll keep you abreast. And even if those two things happen, then next week, Arizona would have to upset Arizona State for UCLA to wind up in the Rose Bowl. If that doesn't happen, chances are UCLA will be going to the Aloha Bowl in Honolulu, probably against Maryland. Let me bring in now Frank Broyles, who has covered this game several times over the past decade. And Frank, it's a rivalry really unlike any other in the country. Well, they're cross time cross town rivals and these neighborhood brawls are the fiercest fights that you would have anywhere and of course they've got great talent on this field I, I guess as much as any two teams in America there's so much at stake bragging rights recruiting advantages and all the elements of a great ball game are, are right here today and here are the Bruins of UCLA now for years this game was played in the Coliseum because it was the home for both SC and UCLA and then this year UCLA moved its act here. So this is officially the home of the Bruins now. Though the crowd is just about split in half. Let's talk about UCLA. They were criticized in recent times for being dull offensively. Can't say that this year, though. They're averaging 35 points a game, Frank, third in the country. And in Tom Ramsey, they have a great quarterback. Well, they, they're very explosive. They can score from anywhere on the field. They, in Ramsey, they have one of the top quarterbacks in the nation. They have flashy runners, outstanding receivers, and they're dangerous from any place on the football field. Now, USC does not have an O.J. Simpson or a Mike Garrett or a Ricky Bell or a Marcus Allen. They run by committee out of the tailback spot. But one thing about SC, the names may change, but every year it's defense. Well, their defense is outstanding. They are seventh in the nation in defense, allowing just 12 points a game, and they believe in their defense. They're, they're actually arrogant. They, they're, their temperament is what you want on defense. They try to snuff the other team out. They try to intimidate them, and UCLA is going to have to be very careful when they put the ball in the air. So what normally makes the difference in a game of this magnitude, a better offense or a better defense in your estimation? Well, in Southern Cal, since they have the better defense, they want to be a very low-scoring game. That gives them the edge, but uh, UCLA he wants it to be a high scoring game and that gives them a big advantage looking forward to it glad you're with us as the usc trojans take on the ucla bruins before more than a hundred thousand at the rose bowl in pasadena back to kick it off right after this start of the game at hand with southern california having won the toss the trojans electing to receive UCLA to kick off. This is the end of the regular season for UCLA. Only a bowl game after this one for SC. It's the penultimate game. Next week, they still have to face Notre Dame at the Coliseum. So USC 7-2. and two. UCLA with a mark of 8-1-1. One and one. A beautiful setting. The Rose Bowl in Pasadena framed by the San Gabriel Mountains. Temperature about 70 degrees. It's dry. It rained here Thursday night. The field, though, is in good shape. Just a little bit soft. 
kicking off for the UCLA Bruins will be Ken Potter. And back to receive for the Trojans, Anthony Gibson and Joey Browner. That's Browner on the left, who ran an interception back for a touchdown last week. It's a line drive kick handled by an up man at the 21-yard line and returned to the 31. Mark Boyer, a tight end for the Trojans. First and 10. Scott Kinsley took over when Sean Salisbury was hurt. Zepp Lee is the fullback. We'll see Anthony Gibson starting and a lot of Todd Spencer today. Timmy White, one wide out, number six. And Jeff Simmons, who is third all-time in receptions for the Trojans, is the other wide receiver. First and ten for USC. They started the season with Sean Salisbury at quarterback. He suffered a knee injury, underwent surgery in the Arizona State game. It's been Tinsley at the helm for the last month. First and ten from the 31-yard line. And they start with the tailback. It's Anthony Gibson and no game through the middle. Gibson, 5'11", 190. Up front, you've got Don Nosebar, one tackle. Joe Murray, a guard at 265. Slayton is outstanding at 255. Bruce, Bruce Matthews will make several All-American teams this year. And Kelly Thomas, the other tackle, with Fred Cornwell, the tight end. Scored the winning touchdown last year against Oklahoma. Second down, 10 Trojans from the 31-yard line. A long count by Tinsley, and again it's Gibson with some room this time, and spun down out of the 38-yard line by Tom Sullivan, number 32, and Don Rogers, number 7. Rogers was in the hospital yesterday with a staph infection. But in the starting lineup today, there are the Bruins defensively. Randall, Morgan, he's a good one, number 40, and Barbie. Delacono, Montgomery, Knowles, Leone are the linebackers in the secondary with Sanchez, Turner, Sullivan, and Rogers. Third down, call it three. Trojans from the 38-yard line. To the air for the first time. Good protection, and dumps it off and dropped by Anthony Gibson, number 24. Incomplete. So Tinsley looked over the middle, saw nobody there. Went to the outlet, and he couldn't hang on. As we look at Scott Tinsley, the substitute quarterback, replacing uh, the starter Salisbury last two weeks ago and has had two outstanding games. They're very pleased. They say he's one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the league, Scott Kinsley. Dave Pryor, a senior who has been the Trojans punter since day one as a freshman, sets up back at his own 25-yard line. Lupe Sanchez back deep for UCLA. It's a good booming kick. Fair catch called for, but Sanchez lets it bounce and it goes into the end zone for a touchback. It'll be first and 10 and counting the bounce and roll into the end zone a 62 yard kick Tom Ramsey at the helm for UCLA they've got Frank Bruno the fullback Danny Andrews will start a tailback we'll see a lot of Kevin Nelson and Frank Cephas you've got Jojo Townsell on one side and Cormac Carney on the other a great pair of receivers Townsell has had great success in prior USC games meanwhile Carney has had very limited success. He's been shut out twice in three prior appearances against the Trojans in terms of making catches. First down and Ramsey to put it up right away. Gets protection, fires over the middle, finds Andrews out of the backfield and a first down to the 46-yard line. A 26-yard pickup, Darrell Hopper makes the tackle. Oh, I love that. I love it, Al. First play of the ball game. Let them know where, where your strength is. This is where we see the confidence that the coaches have in Tom Ramsey, who's completed career-wise over 58% of his passes. Right on the money to the back coming out of, out of the, releasing out of the backfield. And Andrews comes out of the game after making the catch, replaced by Kevin Nelson. Split back alignment. They give it to Kevin Nelson over the left side for about three as he takes it to the 49-yard line. Kevin, the younger brother of Darren Nelson, had a great career at Stanford and was the first-round draft choice of the Minnesota Vikings. He's been hobbled by injuries, however, this season. UCLA had a stuttering ground attack until just recently, and last week, for the first time, they did look very good on the ground against Stanford. Now, I think what Terry Donahue was trying to do is establish some running game and get it practiced, getting in, in preparation for this game against uh, Southern Cal, which they must, must establish a run if they hope to win. On second down and six, Andrews is back in. That's Townsell in motion to the right. And dropping back is Ramsey. Under a lot of pressure, Ramsey able to get free, however, and into SC territory, and he is stopped close to a first down at the 44-yard line by Tim Sullivan. Now up front, Irv Eatman was playing defense. He's on offense now. Blake Wingle at 264 pounds. Dan Dufour is the center. He's a good one. He'll be facing a Chica today. Steve Williams, a junior from York. 
Yorba Linda. Duval Love out of Fountain Valley, California. And Paul Bergman is the tight end. They go to him a lot. He's made 34 catches this season. They're going to bring in the chains here. If I if I was coaching today, I'd like to have Tom Rams as my quarterback for the, exactly what happened on the last play. Receivers covered, a good pressure on him. He scrambled right up the middle and made the first down, turning a bad play into a successful one. They have the first, their second successive first down. UCLA at the Southern California 44-yard line. It's interesting, when the season started, all the talk was about Elway, Marino, Kelly at Miami, Collier at Southern Mississippi. Ramsey was really in the second echelon, but here he is, and as far as numbers are concerned anyway, he's number one. Bergman setting up on the right side on first down from the 44-yard line, and the ball is given to Andrews who gets inside the 30 and he gets down to the 25 yard line. Danny Andrews, last week he had his first 100 yard day as a Bruin, 148 against the Cardinal. What's the blocking develop? Well, the lineman of pulling is just student body sweep to the right, but the key is that Andrews breaks the tackle of the cornerbacks west right at the line of scrimmage and goes into the secondary for a big game. Individual effort by Andrews, the sophomore quarterback. 19-yard pickup for him, and another first down. Three straight for UCLA. First and 10 at the SC 25-yard line. Nelson is back in with Bruno. They give it to Kevin. Good hole inside the 20 to 15, and gets to the 11-yard line. Another first down. So for their first first down, they went to the air, and the rest of the time, they stayed on the ground. And picking up yardage, good, steady, solid drive. Four straight first downs, and first and 10 at the 11. One thing that coaches fear when they face a quarterback like Ramsey, you talk so talk so much about having to stop his passing that you forget that the other team can run the football. You have to be ready to defend them both against a team like UCLA. Now Andrews is in the game, along with Toa Saipali, who is the new fullback, and they give it to Saipali up the middle. He gets inside the 10 and bunched up at about the 8-yard line, a pickup of maybe 3. In the middle, it's Tim Sullivan, the linebacker from Massapequa, New York, who makes the stop. You see, Southern Cal has allowed only 80 yards a game rushing for the season. They're seventh in the nation in that category. UCLA, I made this statement yesterday to Al, I, if UCLA can run for 125 to 150 yards, they'll be right into the game at the very end and with a good chance to win. They're starting out in that direction. Second down, call it seven at the nine-yard line. Ramsey with a short drop and over the middle and incomplete. Cormac Carney was the intended receiver and the coverage was provided by number 41 who had his hand in the air, Tony Brewer. To be, you have to be very careful when you throw the ball in the middle against uh, uh, Southern Cal. They've intercepted 20, 24 passes. West, number nine, pushes them to the inside. The ball could have been caught, but it's been a sensational catch by Carmack Carney, who has all the individual records of receiving for UCLA. He's a career leader with one more catch. He'll be out in front all alone in terms of seasonal catches at 44. And Ramsey now with third down seven coming up is going to take a timeout looked over the defense and said wait a minute an important first drive and let's see if we can culminate it with a touchdown so he'll go over and talk with Donna you and Homer Smith third down seven coming up 10 25 to go in the first quarter Tom Ramsey trying to keep a streak alive today has just taken a timeout now third down and seven for UCLA at the Southern California nine the Bruins for their first drive of the day Saipali goes in motion. They fake the pitch. Ramsey with protection has a man wide open and a touchdown to Harper Howell, the tight end. They had a double tight end alignment with Howell and Bergman and Harper Howell for the touchdown. Howell has caught nine balls this season, four of them for scores. The amazing thing to me about the call, and I give Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator, tremendous credit for it. He, Al, he, you see how they lined up in a tight formation on third and long, and they faked the run and got the tight end in behind Pringle number 40 for the touchdown. John Lee, the freshman, to attempt the point after. He's 37 of 38 this season. Rick Neuheisel, the backup quarterback, to spot it down at the 10. A penalty flag and a fake, and they'll go for two, and we've got another penalty flag on the far side of the field. And the Trojans are able to thwart the two-point attempt, but let's see about the call. 
Joey Browner came flying in, number 47. <clears throat> what we just witnessed was the, the hold of juggling the ball, and he has a, has a juggle ball plan. Every team does. When he juggles the, the snap, then he starts rolling out, yelling, fire, 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 and, and the teammates run a pass battle, and they try to recover from a bad snap. Well, they didn't recover, but they're no. going to get another chance, though, because of an offside, and I believe it was Browner, Joey Browner, 47, who came charging through, who was offside. And so UCLA will have another opportunity. Spotting it at the one and a half, and now at the nine-yard line to put it down New Heisel for Lee. This time he handles it perfectly, and the kick splits the uprights. So the Bruins going all the way, 80 yards on a drive, mixing the passes and the runs, and here's the score again. It's a fake of the sweep, and Ramsey sh shows great poise, and he lays the ball over all of the secondary uh, of the UCLA team. Watch the fake of the sweep. The third and nine call football fans is the toughest that any football coach can make during a ball game, but there it is. Howell wide open, feet down in goal line, touchdown. Howell for six, Lee for one, seven nothing Bruins, 10 21 to go in the quarter. Harper Howell, who has that Southern California look, as you can see, but he's from Boulder, Colorado, scored the touchdown, and the Bruins to put it in the air. Potter's kick is a good one, and Browner will down it in the end zone. The Trojans come out to the 20 to start their second series. And I'm sure the Trojans are a little bit shaken by. The fact that uh, UCLA could move the length of the field and score against the defense, it has been allowed only six touchdowns scored against it on the run and six in the pass for the season. There are the numbers for the drive. Play selection was outstanding, Al. I, I don't know that I've seen a drive more perfectly executed, both by the pass and run, against a fine team like Southern Cal. The SC defense has pitched three shutouts this season. So 7 nothing Bruins, first down SC from the 20-yard line. Tinsley giving it away to Gibson, breaks a tackle at the line, and then skirts out to the 25-yard line for a pickup of five. Don Rogers and Tom Sullivan, the safeties, converge on the stop. Gibson had a great day against Stanford. Normally, Todd Spencer would be getting the start, but Spencer was shaken up about a month ago and is really not at 100%, though John Robinson was saying that we should see a lot of him today. Gibson's carried three times for 12 yards. Second down, five from the 25. This time the fullback, the up man is Kennedy Pola, and he gets the first down, taking it out to the 36-yard line. Rogers again makes the stop. Interesting story. Kennedy Pola is a freshman who was a reserve linebacker until three weeks ago. It's amazing. You, it gives you an idea of how Southern Cal can recruit. When you take a second-string linebacker in the seventh week of the season, move him over and put him at your starting fullback, and he's averaging over five yards a try. SC with its initial first down. First and 10, Trojans from the 36-yard line. Tinsley off the play fake, gets good protection, over the middle to Simmons, and Simmons in the Bruin territory, stopped at the 48-yard line by Tom Sullivan. The 42nd catch of the season for Simmons. Here it is from the end zone. Watch the pass protection. The one thing quarterbacks want is be able to step up the middle without any hands in their face. And obviously Tinsley just steps up and throws the ball right over the linebackers for the completion as Simmons, six foot three, just an outstanding year he's having right over the middle. Watch him leap and catch the ball. Outstanding. Pitch it to Gibson and the Bruins bury him. Number 85, Lee Knowles with a flying tackle along with Mike Barbie, 89. One thing that the UCLA defense is programmed to do in this ball game, and we'll watch for it, is force the tailbacks to go outside. The Southern Cal runners want to cut back. That's where they make their yardage, and we'll watch for it as the game progresses. Todd Spencer is now in the game, and they have him lined up in a slot to the right side. It's second down and 15 from the Trojan 48-yard line. Everybody goes into the pattern. The protection is good. A man is open at the 50-yard line. It's Pola, and he gets back to about the initial line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 10 as he takes it to the 47 of UCLA, and Tom Sullivan is again in on the tackle, number 32. You, Southern Cal is starting with really a substitute backfield. The tailback crutcher that started the season is out for the season. Their quarterback is out for the season. The one of their fullbacks is injured. Another one was declared ineligible. But with that offensive line, 
two future All-American, potential All-Americans, and one All-Conference player leading the way, opening up the holes. Third down, 10, eight minutes to go, first quarter, seven nothing, UCLA. Tinsley quickly over the middle for a first down to the 35 to Fred Cornwell, number 84, the tight end. His seventh catch of the season, it's Doug West, the linebacker, 41 for the tackle. Watch Tinsley throw the ball real quickly. This is the Brigham Young influence of Ted Tao, the new coach. Three steps back, the tight end is open. Let him have it before the linebackers can react, and it's another first down for Southern Cat. Cornwell's first catch in his last four games, first and 10, USC at the Bruin 34-yard line. White split left, Simmons sent to the right. And they pitch it to Spencer, his first carry of the day. Next him about two yards, Lee Knowles making the tackle. Spencer, 5'11", 195, a junior, and you boxing fans will recall his father, Thad Spencer, a heavyweight contender a couple of decades back. Well, this young Todd Spencer's a fighter. He's been a fullback and a tailback. Not big for a fullback, but very aggressive uh, starting the season this, this fall. Second down, eight at the UCLA 32-yard line. This time it's Gibson trying to get outside, and no, can't turn the corner. Down he goes for a loss of a yard, maybe two. Turned in by Neil Delicano, number 39. The defensive pursuit, it really makes the play. Delicano, number 39, was a tailback from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We tried to recruit him in Arkansas, but he chose UCLA, and he makes a great play, forcing the runner to the outside, and that is what the defense is programmed to do. Third down, call it 11. At the 35-yard line, 7 nothing Bruins, 6-10 to go, first quarter. Tinsley. Forced out of the pocket, looking for the first down, and is close to it, but he's shy as he gets to the 25-yard line. Doug West making the stop. They need to move to the 24-yard line, and they will spot it back at the 27, in fact. The crowd does not like where that ball was spotted. Looked like he got a couple of more yards than he was given. And Steve Jordan will come in to attempt a field goal. Now you were right on target. It looked to me like that Tinsley's knee hit the ground, but he was stretching out, and the ball should be placed where the ball is when his knee hits the ground instead of putting it back where, the, where his knee touched. Putting it back there makes you not think about going for it, and timeout is called. Timeout is called, but an offside penalty was called, too. That which go, now we've got a little tricky decision to be made by the officials. Which took place first. That's correct. Flag went down. There was a Bruin who came charging in. But a timeout had been called by Tinsley, who was the holder. And a penalty of five yards would give Southern Cal a first down. I believe they'll wipe it off. And we have the official mic. The referee today is John Presley. And what he is doing is wiping off, as Frank suggested, that call. The mic not working, but what he was saying was that timeout had been taken. So the Trojans spend a timeout. Each team has taken a timeout. The line of scrimmage is the 27-yard line, and a field goal attempt would be spotted at the 34, making it a 44-yard attempt. John Robinson took over in 1976. His mark against UCLA is 5-1. and one. Overall, Robinson is 66 13 and 2, and that's an 827 percent. That's fantastic. Of course, John Robinson is a skillful coach. I've watched his teams perform under all types of pressure. I think he is unsurpassed as a resourceful coach where his team can win, wheeling, dealing, defense, running, whatever it takes. Thoughtful man, humorous man, a man of great perspective, and they love him at USC. Now, Jordan from the 34 yard line, a 44 yard attempt, and it's good. So SC starting a drive at the 20 that bogs down, but they get three, and we have five minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. It's UCLA 7, USC 3. Houston, where the Blue Bonnet Bowl is waiting for Notre Dame. Air Force's Marty Lawson with two two-yard touchdown runs, second quarter, 14-0 Air Force in Colorado Springs. Al? 
Jim UCLA leading USC 7 to 3 in the first quarter with 5 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the period. SC with Jordan who kicked the field goal to kick off from the near hash mark. And UCLA with a couple of run back specialists and Doki Williams and Jojo Townsell standing at the goal line. Jordan's kick is deep. Williams takes it four yards in. He'll come out with it to the 10, to the 15. He gets out past the 30, runs into his own man, and that slowed his momentum, and he's down to the 40-yard line. It was Cephas trying to lay down the block that time. How you hit it right on the button? Because if uh, his, he doesn't bump in his old man with his 9-5 speed, one of the premier track men in the country, in the Pac-10, watch him break this hole. There's a little daylight, and uh, Doki Williams, number eight, has averaged 26 yards every time he's touched the ball. Right there is where he lost his momentum, and they stopped. Ran right into Cephas. First down, UCLA at the 40-yard line. With Carney going in motion, Ramsey to put it up, and he dumps it off to Bruno, who gets to the 40 and run out of bounds near the 45-yard line. Frank Bruno, 5'11", 229, out of New Jersey. Most coaches treat the screen pass as just like a run. It's a high percentage uh, play. It's, you get the ball outside. As we look at Tom Ramsey last week against Stanford, that was his most productive day in passing but he's had many many sensational games four over 300 yards what a game last week you had Elway on one side Ramsey on the other 38 35 was the final Bruins prevailing second down and five from the 45 yard line and Andrews gets it out close to midfield he'll be shy of the first down by a yard maybe two it's Troy West for the stop now the Bruin offense as you can see passing has been the dominant feature of it. 35 and a half points per game, third in the nation against that SC defense, Frank. Well, here again, which will win when you get a matchup like this? That's, that's what I would pay to see. It. The offense versus a strong defense. Third down and a yard and a half from the 49 yard line. Carney in motion and looking for the first down is Cephas and getting it as he crosses the 50 yard line to the Trojan 49. Troy West again making the stop. One thing we should mention again that Southern Cal's is defense is programmed to stop the run first. Don't let a team mix it up running and passing. No one has been able to do that against them in this entire season. UCLA has started with a good mix. First down, UCLA at the SC 49-yard line. Bruins ahead by four. Ramsey gets good protection. It's complete to the 45-yard line to Kevin Nelson, and he skitters to the 40. Shy of a first down by maybe one. Tim Sullivan, the linebacker, 48 for the tackle. Watch it from the end zone. When you throw on first down, you're going to get good protection because the defense has to pretty much play the run. This is the fourth time that Ramsey has gone to the pass on first down in this first quarter. He's completed all four of them. UCLA passing has prevailed this season, yet great balance in terms of touchdowns. They've scored 23 through the air and 22 on the ground. It is second down and one. And up the middle goes Cephas. And he picks up the first down. Now, Cephas is one of the three tailbacks. Next year, I think you can look for Cephas to change positions and move up. He'll be the fullback. He's a little bit bigger than the other tailbacks. He weighs a little over 200 pounds. He's a slasher and a good blocker. And if you can get uh, a youngster who's played some tailback moving at fullback and get that double barrel type offense, you can give defenses problems. They like to use him in those short yardage situations, as was the case there. First down with Andrews and Bruno, the split backs now, on first down from the 34-yard line. They have Bergman setting up on the left side. And straight back goes Ramsey. He can scramble, and he can throw on the run, and he does here, and he can back across the middle. Complete to the 21 to Cormac Carney, who has that knack of getting free. Joey Browner makes the stop. So the Bruins are marching again, and let's get a word from Jim Lampley in New York. Jim? Alan, it is the Razorback Hogs who have drawn first blood in Dallas. Tom Jones pitching out to Gary Anderson, who went in from four yards out. And it is 7-0 Arkansas. The Hogs already have the ball back after a Dickerson fumble. Back to you, Michael. All right, Jim. Big grin on the face of one Mr. <laughs> Broyles right up in this booth. First down. 
UCLA at the 20 yard line. Fake the draw and then look out. Buried at the 30 yard line. Georgia Chica, number 78, the nose guard, the man who blocked what would have been the game winning field goal for UCLA last year. Number 78. The perfect time to blitz is when you get the other team is getting close to your goal line. You have to go at a blitz. You have to make something happen. Chica number 78. This is his sixth sack of the season. He comes free. Ramsey had no chance. Just a perfect defensive call by the Southern Cal staff. On second down and 18, they send Townsville to the left. They send Carney to the right. Another blitz. And Ramsey scrambling. Laterals it back. At the 24-yard line goes Kevin Nelson, who was trailing the play. Once again, a tremendous play selection by Southern Cal, excuse me, UCLA. Del Rio, number 52, is on the verge of real greatness for Southern Cal. Just a talented young sophomore. 17 sacks this year, tackled for losses. Number 52, and he's chasing Ramsey down, but they had the option call. They expected the blitz, and there's no final play to run against the blitz than the option play. Third down, 12. Townsell wide to the left and Carney wide to the right. From the 23-yard line, they stay on the ground. It's Andrews looking for room and breaks a tackle and goes in for the touchdown. Danny Andrews. Chris Yelich, number 66, lays the block that sprung him. So when everybody thought pass, they stay on the ground and lead it 13 to 3. John Lee for the extra point attempt with New Heisel to hold. 23 yard touchdown run. He's carried three times, says Andrews, for 46 yards. The spot is good, and so is the catch. The Bruins in the first quarter shredding the Trojan defense. Al, I, I, I have to say, I've not seen better signal calling. One thing, surprise, is the main element of success in any football game. If you can cross up your opponents, you're going to make something happen. And on third and, and long yardage, look at the blocking, look at the running. That is tremendous execution. And Andrews made a sensational run out of it for another touchdown. And we'll be right back after this. Danny Andrews with good bloodlines, his cousins Willie Brown and Gene Washington, who made their mark in both college and pro football, and he's making his mark. It's 14-3 in favor of UCLA with a kick fielded at the four-yard line by Joey Browner, and he is upended at the 27-yard line. One thing, uh, the coaches, when, when this happens to you, like John Robinson, he'll call his team over, Al, and he'll just say, hey, men, we've been in tough ball games before. We turned the ball over three times against Arizona and threw for an interception for a touchdown. We came back in one. Stick to our knitting. We're a good football team. We'll get in the groove here in just a minute. And we've seen it time and again in this series, too, the comebacks. Oh, have we ever. I, it's unbelievable some of the games that I've seen in this not in this stadium, I started to say, but in this ball game. Comebacks very much a part of the lore of the Bruin Trojan series. They'll start from the 26. And Tinsley looking for Simmons, who reaches out and can't make the catch. Covered on the play by Don Rogers, number seven, who gave him the pop. Simmons, number three all time, trailing only Randy Simran and Lynn Swan in career catches. He's made one today and has 92 for his career. Simran wound up with 100. John Robinson, excuse me, John Robinson told us both yesterday that Simmons is having one of the greatest years of any receiver he's ever been associated with. There are his numbers, uh, career numbers, 91 going into this ball game. On second down, they give it to Gibson. Gibson out to the 33-yard line, 34 perhaps. Of course, for those of you around the country, who've watched SC over the years, the names come immediately to mind. Mike Garrett and O.J. Simpson and Clarence Davis and Anthony Davis and Ricky Bell and Charles White and Marcus Allen. They don't have anybody of that caliber this season. But they've got that great offensive line. Yep. Hudson Houck, who is, uh, I think, one of the great offensive line coaches in the country. And he's doing a tremendous job here with his team. 
That's McCool going in motion on third down and short and bursting through the middle and getting the first down is Anthony Gibson, the senior from San Fernando, California. Gibson was offered an academic scholarship to Harvard. Made a trip there, thought about going back east, decided to stay at home. Well, uh, thinking about the Ivy League, I was kidding Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator, who's a graduate of Princeton. I said, I don't know of any graduates of Princeton other than you that went into the coaching ranks. <coughs> He's calling this game like a Princeton oh. grad. He's made some marvelous calls from the press box, phoning down to Donahue. First down from the 40-yard line. Tinsley has to scramble and can't get loose. And that's a 10-yard loss. Neil Delacano, number 39. The sophomore from Louisiana. And that should be the final play of the first quarter. So UCLA in a true home game. This is their home for the first time. And attendance has been up this season. Over 100,000 seats have been sold for this one. The place is packed. And the Bruins have enjoyed every minute of it. All 15 as the first quarter comes to an end. First quarter history in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena with a score. UCLA 14, Southern California 3. Symbolic picture as we start the second quarter. SC has been decimated by injuries right there. Sean Salisbury was the starting quarterback, six feet five, had won the job in the spring from John Mazur, but was hurt against Arizona State and underwent surgery. So we start the second quarter. Al Michaels along with Frank Royals. Kelly Hayes handling the spotting today. George Hill the numbers. It's 14 to three UCLA and it's second down and 20 for SC from the 30 yard line. And they pitch it back to Spencer to the short side of the field and he picks up only a yard before he's thrown out of bounds. Well, you can see the stats. It's been all UCLA. Nine first downs, 140 yards to 65. The biggest surprise, rushing 77 yards. They're just three shy in the first quarter of what you Southern Cal has given up in the entire ball game average for the season. Excellent line blocking by UCLA has been the difference. Third down and 19 from the 31-yard line. White to the left, Simmons to the right. Tinsley has to step up, has some room, 35, and into the 40-yard line. Well shy of the first down. The Bruin defense that time could afford to give up a little bit of yardage because SC needed 19. Larry Thomas makes the stop. Trojans to putt now. Tinsley shows his ability. He's poised. The receivers are covered. You certainly don't want to throw for an interception. And he has some little scrambling ability. He comes right back up the middle, protects that football, gets down on the ground, and they're not hurt too badly if they punt it. Interceptions, what would kill Southern Cal at this point? Dave Pryor to kick. His second boot of the day. His first was 62 yards, counting the roll into the end zone. Lupe Sanchez to receive. Another good kick. Sanchez will run it back. From the 15, he can only take it back out to maybe the 18-yard line. And so UCLA will take over again, deep in their own territory. 44-yard kick by Breyer. Many times we underestimate the value of the foot in the game of football. David Breyer, the coaches told me, when you need a great kick, you would come up with it. He's had a 60-yarder and a 44-yarder and back UCLA up all the way to the 17-yard line. First and ten for the Bruins, early second quarter, UCLA leading 14-3 in a game that was rated just about a toss-up at the outset. With Bruno going in motion to the right, Ramsey throws to Bruno, who breaks one tackle and carries another man with him out to the 26-yard line. That's Darrell Hopper, number 14. When Bruno went in motion to the outside, the fullback, that made a triple wing of that side, and Brown, or the, the uh, outside linebacker, had to drop off in cover, and he couldn't do it. He missed the tackle, and Bruno turns up and made some yardage. Once again, throwing on first down. Seems to be their pattern so far in this ball game. Catching Southern Cal off guard. Brian Wiley is in as a running back, number 22, on second down and one. Wiley along with Andrews. They'll give it to Andrews, who goes behind Wiley's block and has a first down out at the 29-yard line. 
one of the real comers in that offensive line for UCLA is Duval Love, number 67, playing right tackle. He started in this ball game last year as a freshman. This year he has been their most consistent blocker, and most of their key yards have been made running right behind him. Well, that's the problem right there for USC because that man on the ground is number 78, George Achika, the nose guard and a key element in the USC defense so they work on George with a clock stopped and 1351 as you look at Donahue remaining in the half it's the Bruins by 11. The injury to Achika is not serious he has come back to the bench under his own power there he is and we can take a look at how the injury was sustained. Dufour, the son of number 59, is blocking on Achika. Number 78 stands him up. That's a good block by the offense. And then as he tries to release, I think that um, yeah, number 60, Steve Williams, falls across his leg and damn, it hurts him just, just minor, Pierce. It was interesting. The SC fans were holding their breath as Achika finally got up, started to come off slowly, then ran off and threw his arm up in the air as if to say, all right, gang, I'm okay. Just give me a minute to get my breath, and I'll be back in. First down and 10 from the 29-yard line. Ramsey, who has hit his last five, steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle, and it's incomplete at the 32-yard line. Frank Bruno might have been surprised that the pass was coming his way, and Ramsey takes a shot. Once again, we see why I, I said earlier that if I was coaching football again, I'd like to have Tom Ramsey my quarterback. He takes a play where the coverage is outstanding, no receivers open. Instead of taking a deep loss, he comes back towards the line of scrimmage, and as he's going down, he releases the ball to avoid any loss whatsoever. The man who's taken a cheek is spot is Clint Hampton, number 50. You can see him there on the defensive line. Second down, 10. The Bruins from the 29-yard line. Ramsey throwing complete after the 35 to the tight end Paul Bergman. And he's out of bounds shy of the first down by maybe two. Bergman was a teammate of John Elway in high school. He was a wide receiver. So he has about 4'7 speed, and he's a good target along with having the, the quickness to get open. As you look at his numbers, 34 receptions for 15-yard average for a tight end is pretty darn good. Another teammate was Blanchard Montgomery in high school, who's a UCLA linebacker, number 27. He was the tailback for Elway. Third down, two, UCLA from the 37-yard line. Bruins leading by 11. The fake, Ramsey rolling, has no room, and the Trojan defense is able to stop it. Keith Browner, Joey's brother, and Byron Darby made the stop. Browner, one of the six football playing Browners. Brother number one would be Ross, the great Notre Dame and Cincinnati Bengal lineman. And Ross was an outland trophy winner, I, I believe I'm right. Yep. Great play by the de defense of Southern Cal at the time they needed the post. Kevin Bunafe, number 17, to do the punting. His average 41.9. Joey Browner back to receive. The kick is a high kick that hangs and takes a good UCLA bounce. And the Bruins will down it very deep at the 10-yard line. So they pin SC deep in its own territory with 12.39 to go in the first half. 54 yards. Jim Lampley again in New York. Washington trying to nail down the Rose Bowl berth against the Cougars in Spokane has scored first Cowan to Anthony Allen for 24 yards in the touchdown, 7-0 Washington. Al, tell Coach Broyles that the Hogs are playing real well in Dallas. Al Michaels. And back at the Rose Bowl on that last punt, Lupe Sanchez actually touched it at the 16, trying to get out of the way. So instead of the 11-yard line, as he starts from the 16, on first down, and that's Spencer breaking tackles, picking up the first down, and bowling his way out to the 30-yard line, stopped by Don Rogers, a 14-yard pickup. Todd Spencer exploded. Uh, he is right through there, just as quick, inside, cut back, good blocking, has daylight. Now he runs over the safety man, Rogers, and comes out to the right and makes the first down. First and 10, USC from the 30-yard line. UCLA leading 14-3.
Falcons leading tackler last season, making his third interception of 1982. When you scramble the defense, as UCLA does with their safety man, uh, Rogers, free safety, is not playing safety man. Number seven, he's going to stay up there and look for the short pass, and when uh, Tinsley turned and rifled the ball, Rogers was right in the line of fire and picked it off uh, before Matthews makes the tackle. He wanted to get it to Simmons. Instead, it's UCLA from the 37-yard line. Andrews runs into a lot of traffic. Still gets about three. Darby and Ricky Gray, 35, make the stop. Last week, UCLA lost, excuse me, Southern Cal lost three fumbles in the first quarter and had an interception for a touchdown. On those three fumbles, Arizona only got two field goals. So they know what is what they've worked cut out for, and they've got to stop UCLA on this drive. Georgia Chica, by the way, is back in there, number 78 for SC on second down and seven. Ramsey buying some time. He's going to keep it. Looks for the sideline. Gets out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. He's close to a first down. Run out by Troy West. It'll be third down and short with 11.28 to go in the second quarter. I think that Tom Ramsey may be the only quarterback that is up in the leader passes in the country that still has plus yardage running the football. Most of the uh, proficient passes they get sacked in the where they have minus yardage. But right there is an indication of why Tom Rams is one of the best in the country. Bad play to a good play. Third down and a long yard at the 28-yard line. And looking for that long yard is Frank Cephas. And we'll see where they mark the forward progress. He should have it. Jack Del Rio and Troy West making the stop. They use Andrews and they use Nelson to pick up what they hope are long gainers. And then Cephas comes in at tailback normally on those short yardage situations. Well, and, and having depth at tailback is a tremendous advantage as the game wears along. You've got a fresh runner in the backfield, and, and that fresh, freshness helps him with his speed, his quickness as the players get a little bit tired. I think that's maybe a big factor uh, in the fourth quarter of this game. Rogers is the man number seven right there. Had the staff infection. Didn't make practice yesterday. And it's a first down. down as a result really of the scramble by Ramsey after his receivers were covered they had a good heavy rush and he was able to get outside and make about eight yards setting up the last play. Eleven minutes to go in the half. UCLA leading 14-3. Cephas and Bruno are the running backs on first down. Ramsey on a roll to the left and throwing and nobody's there and throwing it away. Townsell was the only man even remotely in the area. That's one thing about the rollout pass that uh, coaches know and have confidence in. When you roll out, if your receivers are covered, it's very easy for you to see them because they're close in front of you, and you can get rid of the ball and get it out of bounds and come back and try again. It's a good safe pattern, roll it out, and uh, if it's completed, you throw it. If it's not, you get rid of it out of bounds. The Bruins, second down and 10, and still, despite what would be a normal passing situation, coming in with a two tight end offense and sending Seafish in motion. Ramsey faking, nothing doing, drops at the 28 yard line for a loss of two by Byron Darby, number 94 from Inglewood, California. What coaches refer to this as a coverage sack which means the receivers were covered. The four-man rush finally got to Ramsey when he had no one to throw to. Byron Dar Darby, number 94. Really an outstanding football player. He's played linebacker, outside, inside, and down lineman, and capable of playing any of those positions quite well. Injured Bruin, it's the guard, 66, Chris Yelich, who laid the block that was able to spring Andrews on his earlier touchdown jaunt. So they work on him with 10.33 to go in the first half. The Bruins have been having a lot of trouble at one guard spot this season, and it was occupied at the preceding moment by Chris Yelich, number 66. Still, obviously, in quite a bit of pain here. Here's how it happened. Yelich, number 66, is blocking on a Trojan, has a good block, and then he just falls over Darby, number 94, 
and in all of my time of coaching, that's where the offensive linemen get hurt the most. They trip over or someone falls over the back of their legs, and that they're so vulnerable to that. I remember in past protection drills that we had, we substitute our off we, we spaced our offensive linemen so far apart in drills, Al, so they wouldn't fall over each other, just to prevent injuries. He, that's too bad. He's a fine young football player. So a scene you do not like to see, obviously, is Yellich gets carried off the field. And then again, it was Yellich who had a moment of glory earlier, and that will be reflected in the films when they take a look back at how Andrews was able to get loose and go in for a touchdown in the first period. Steve Williams, meanwhile, number 60, comes in to replace Yellich. On third and long, uh, UCLA crossed up Southern Cal the last time and scored with a run from about this position on the field. I, I would think that maybe they, they got away with murder on that last one. They might go to pass this time. Or try to settle for a field goal run and set it up for a field goal if they don't make it. It's third down and 12 for UCLA. At the 28-yard line, Townsell wide left. Carney is wide to the right. No run this time. Over the middle. Looking for the tight end, Bergman, and incomplete. Bergman just running straight down the middle on a post. Covered well that time by Ricky Gray, and it's fourth down. Ramsey now 7 of 11 for 81 yards. So a field goal attempt coming up from the 35-yard line. It's a 45-yard attempt. John Lee, who has made 12 of 15 this season, his longest 50 yards last week against Stanford. So it's within range for him. And the kick is long enough, and it's good. 45-yard field goal, the 13th of the season for the freshman John Lee from Downey. Well, I guess both teams are fairly satisfied after the turnover. The throw by Tinsley that Rogers, the free safety, picked off, set up these points. The Southern Cal defense turned them back and forced the field goal. And then on the other hand, UCLA said, hey, we've got to come away with something. And they did. They came away with three points. Not a standoff on that. But 17 to 3, UCLA. Interestingly, Frank, this year, with the fact that the Trojans do not have that one guy who can do it all for you. The Marcus Allen type or the O.J. Simpson type. It's a little bit tougher now for the Trojans to come from behind than it has been. John Robinson said yesterday he didn't want to have to go into a wheel of deal type of offense. That would mean he was falling behind in a wild scoring race. He wanted to keep it close because he's had to narrow his offense down with substitute quarterbacks, tailbacks, and fullbacks. You limit what you do. You run the bases. You're not as diversified. Ken Potter, UCLA's kickoff man, booming this one in Browner's direction, and he'll be content to put it right down there and take it to the 20. So first down, coming up at the 20-yard line. A little uh, parody there of the Trojan horse, the well-known traveler. UCLA has come up with a new mascot. That's a Clydesdale being written, oh, right. written by the Bruins. Boy, you can't get ahead of these students, can you? <laughs> Boy, this tremendous rivalry, tremendous rivalry between these two students. A little in-your-face mascot action. First down from the 20-yard line. The Trojans trailing by two touchdowns, and it's Spencer driven back from the 23 by Lee Knowles, number 85, with 10 minutes to go to the half. Since Southern Cal is limited in their offense with injuries to various positions in the backfield, mainly quarterback, the starters out, the tailback and fullback or substitute, it's going to take a lot of snaps for them to go 80 yards for a touchdown without mistakes. So UCLA just has to bide their time and not give them the big point. Second down, seven, Trojans from the 23-yard line. Pola is the fullback. And Spencer the tailback, and he has a first down after the 35. limited his practice time and his playing time bowl. You can see what a good football player Spencer is. Watch him make number 41 miss him right there. And break into the secondary. Doug West, number 41, the outside linebacker, had a clear shot and couldn't bring him down. And you saw that 
blocked by 37 Kennedy Pola helping to lead the way so as a reward they give Pola the ball and he picks up two I like that as a reward of course I guess you have to give the fullback the ball occasionally out of the high formation from Southern Cal style as we look at some games Al you want to tell us about well Friday coming up the day after Thanksgiving when a lot of you are off at noon Eastern time Pitt Penn State and then next Saturday you've got Auburn against Alabama then the following Saturday it's Arkansas wrapping up its season against Texas on ABC. yep on second down and eight Tinsley has all the time in the world and throws over the middle to Fred Cornwell, and he's to the 44-yard line. From here, it looks as if they are shy of a first down, and it also looks as if Cornwell's hurt. Well, there's a lot of hard hitting going on in the ball game. Emotions are at a peak, intensity it is a high level, and good play results when you have that, and sometimes some injuries. Cornwell held onto that ball and was trying to dive forward and make the first down. One thing as we talk about Tinsley, the substitute quarterback, he has great poise. He gives them leadership. He's giving Southern Cal in these early two ball games where he started the last two weeks, I should say, uh, he has been a unifying force for this offensive unit, and he's underrated. Good possession-type passer. Man who got him was Blanchard Montgomery. Number 27, that was his second catch of the day. And a gain of seven. And we can take a moment here to update you. It is tied in the second quarter. In that game, if, if SMU wins it, they'll be going to the Cotton Bowl. If Arkansas wins it, they'll have to wait and see if Arkansas can beat Texas. That's right. We'd Arkansas would have to defeat Texas. Uh, on December the 4th to go to the top. If Washington wins there, they come here January 1st. It's as simple as that. 7 nothing in the second quarter at Pullman. Pittsburgh routing Rutgers 52-6. to Pitt, no doubt, going to a major bowl game. Speculation being the Cotton. Ohio State defeating Michigan. Not much at stake there, except a little bit of pride for the Buckeyes. Michigan has already won the Rose Bowl bed. So Cornwell assisted there by John Robinson off his left shoulder the head coach helping to take him off the field and Pat McCool number 88 will replace him did you see was it what was impressive you see Cornwell turn back and shake his fist to his team said go get him said go get him team I'm going off but you can do it I could see great team effort great team morale by young Cornwell Al you mentioned earlier he did he caught the, the winning touchdown pass with six seconds on the clock the first pass he'd ever caught as a Trojan tight end against Oklahoma last year. Shy by that much. Interestingly, he caught that pass from a fellow by the name of John Mazur, who was beaten out for the quarterback spot by Salisbury. Mazur didn't want to be a backup, so he transferred to Texas A&M. Sits out this year, plays with Jackie Sherrill next. Third down inches. FC at the 44-yard line. That's Kamana, 26. In motion, and a first down for Anthony Gibson. Tail back out to the 47-yard line. Tom Sullivan making the stop. This is a typical Southern Cal drive that we've seen him do so many times. And in talking to the UCLA coaches, this is something they feared, is letting them take the ball and make sustained drives and wear them down because when the fourth quarter arrives, if this continues, watch out. The Southern Cal running game picks up dramatically. First and 10, USC from the 48-yard line. 8-10 to go in the half. UCLA leading 17-3. Spencer runs into Polo, who was blocking his man. Comes back the other way and gets it across the 50. Delicano making the stop. The report, unfortunately, on Chris Yelich, the UCLA guard, is a broken bone above the ankle. So Yelich, who was carried off the floor, and there is Cornwell. We'll get a report on Fred. The SC tight end being replaced by McCool, 88. He's lined up bottom of the screen right side. Second down, seven from the Bruin 49-yard line, and Tinsley will throw it over the middle, and he goes to the tight end, McCool, for a first down to the 35-yard line. That's one of the, that pass pattern is one of the latest things in college football where the quarterback drops back. He's got the tight end hooking and a screen set up to the left. The linebacker runs out. He lets 
makes the tight end have it right there. Stop. He sees the tight end open because the linebacker ran out to the left with the back of the screen, and they make the first down. So the Trojans mounting an impressive drive. They're at the 36-yard line, and it's Spencer who gets punched up in the middle. No room for Todd. Second down, maybe he gets a yard. Call it second and nine. UCLA used the perfect time. First down as Southern Cal's marching to blitz, safety blitz right up the middle along with the linebacker, and uh, of course they were able to stop the tailback for short game. Good call by the defensive coaches. On second down and nine, look at the bulk up front. Every year you just change the names. The rest of the graphic can basically stay the same. They don't recruit anybody shorter than 6'4". They just won't offer the scholarship in the offensive line. With Spencer in motion, Tinsley under some pressure, goes again to the tight end, McCool. So he's caught a pair, and they spot it at the 25-yard line, and it should be enough for a first down. One thing you have to do if you're the quarterback, when the blitz comes, you've got to be ready to throw immediately, and your best target is your tight end. Right where the linebackers blitz. Larry Smith, Arizona coach, told Terry Donahue this week, hey, don't discount uh, Scott Tinsley throwing on the, against the blitz. He burned us, and he's doing it right now to UCLA. McCool had caught only three passes all season. He's caught two in a row on this drive. From the 25-yard line, it's Gibson trying to get outside, but he can't. Blanchard Montgomery knifing through. It'll be second down and ten. UCLA can't play it back. They do not want to be bounced outside. They want to start outside, cut back, and lower the shoulder and use their power. As we look at John Robinson in his seventh year, 66 wins and 13 losses in two times. What a career. And five and one against UCLA. Second down and ten from the 25-yard line with White in motion to the inside. He looks for Simmons, and it's a little too high. Jeff getting a hand up, but that's all. Mike Durden was covering on the play, 129, trying to blanket the other, but Simmons was there. The pass was just a bit overthrown. It's a tough catch. Simmons gets his hand on it. Watch his move. He, he runs such precise routes. He makes a good fake inside, fools the defensive back. Now he has to establish eye contact with the ball very quickly. The ball is already on his way. It was a little high, and he couldn't hold on to it. And now six defensive backs have come in the ball game for UCLA. Third down 10 from the 25-yard line. White in motion to the inside. They're going to stay on the ground, but the Bruins aren't fooled. Todd Spencer found nothing at all over left guard. So with the Bruins going to that six defensive back setup, the Trojans thought maybe they'd trick them. Cross them up, and they cross themselves up. Sometimes when you try to cross up the defense, it works, as it uh, did with UCLA when they ran on third and ten and scored. But this time, UCLA, after substituting the backs, no such luck for Southern Cal. And now is going to take a timeout, so they've used two of their allotted three. 5.04 to go first half at the Rose Bowl. It's 17-3, to Bruins. Back at the Rose Bowl, the injured SG tied in for Cornwell report. Pulled ligament, knee, probably out for the balance of the day. Meanwhile, SC, after taking the timeout, Tinsley coming over with Robinson, fourth down and 10 at the 25. They're down by 14, and apparently they are going to eschew the field goal and go for it. And they come out with trips to the right. Only Pola in it running back. Tinsley under pressure, throws, it's complete, but shy of a first down. He hits Spencer, but they're shy by five, and they turn it over to UCLA. You know, all Trojan fans are asking, why would he throw short of the first down? The reason is that the defensive backs had covered the deeper receivers. He had no choice but to go to the short man and hope that he could catch the ball and run for the first down. So the Bruins take over at the 19-yard line with 4.57 remaining in the first half. Andrews and Bruno are the running backs. And this is Andrews for about five or six. Let me ask you about that strategy, Frank, as a former coach. Could it be that Robinson feels he just does not have the type of team that can afford to chip away 
at the UCLA lead because he could have gone for a field goal there. It was certainly within range. I think that when other teams are putting the, the opponent is putting seven points on the scoreboard and you're putting threes, you're losing ground in a hurry. He needed something to pep his team up. He didn't think a field goal would help him that much. I think that he there's a good chance he'll regret that. Three points may be the difference at the end of the ball. As it has last two years. On second down and six. Ramsey spinning, losing the football, and it's recovered by SC. John Harvey stripped him. Joey Browner recovered. And there is the big break that SC was looking for. And as they wheel off Cornwell, they stopped him long enough to see that. So he'll go into the dressing room in high spirits. So many times when the quarterback is scrambling, somebody hits him from the side. You can see that Ramsey tried to pull the ball in, but he didn't get it in time as John Harvey, number 63, stripped him loose of the ball. 52, Del, Del Rio was right there to help with his cover. First and 10 for USC. As the SC section going wild now as SC gets the break they need. Number 24, Gibson, for a gain of close to three. So that, of course, the type of play that if SC does indeed come from behind to win it, you go back and you say, that was the thing that turned it around. Ramsey should put the ball away. Once he starts scrambling, do not hold it down by his hip. See, he's got one hand. Now he starts trying to pull it up, but before that, someone over on the side had stripped it out. John Harvey, number 63, it appeared and get the ball back for Southern Cal. Second down, seven. SC at the Bruin, 12. Pitch it to Spencer. Inside the 10 to the five. Don Rogers making the tackle. Here is what you said USC has done after turnovers. 17.7 per game after the points had turned the ball over. And Spencer just showed what momentum can mean when uh, you've got it on your side. Great run. It's a first down. It's first and goal at the five. Spencer and Cole are the running backs. Spencer again to the outside. Run out of bounds at about the three-yard line by Mike Durden, the corner. That big offensive line of Southern Cal, we, we earlier saw the size and the weight. They like to have the, the, the linemen tall, 6'4 or more, because they have leverage in their style of blocking where they turn the, risk, the defensive end rather than try to knock them back off the line. Spencer has carried 10 times for 43 yards. Double tight end set up, wing left on second down and goal. That's Kamenai in motion. They go Spencer's way again, tries to thread his way through, but no, a negligible gain, if any. And it will be third down and goal. It's Montgomery and Knowles in the middle of that UCLA defense for the stop. UCLA is playing their scheme and what they're scheduled to do on the goal line all over, force the back to the outside. Is something about the Southern Cal scheme of blocking. When their tailback's forced outside, they make very little yardage. At the three, third down, goal. Again, two tight ends. Again, Kamana in motion. And again, it's Spencer for the touchdown. Trojans doing exactly what they had to do. They got the big break they so desperately needed after coming up short on a fourth and ten. Ramsey gives the ball away and then SC moves in and they are right back in it with 2.18 to go in the half. Steve Jordan to try the point after. Kinsley to hold. It's good. Trojans back in it, now down by seven. The tight end 
and the fullback to make the key blocks and you pry open a hole. There's nothing there. Polo, the freshman fullback, blocks the cornerback out. The tight end and guard block from the inside. Here it is, right the line, right down at the where the line, you can see the line blocking. You see him pry open the hole. They blocked it and opened the hole and Spencer number 23 scores. Two minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the first half. The Rose Bowl in Pasadena with 100,000 looking on. And it's 17 to 10 with UCLA on top. Now we said it to start. There's great talent on this field by both teams. Guess as much as any football game you'll see anywhere. When UCLA and Southern Cal meet, you see a lot of ability in, on both teams. There are some great rivalries around the country. It's hard to say one's any better than another, but this one really, in its own way, has to be unsurpassed. The setting itself, so magnificent, the crosstown rivals. The kick here, deep, fielded in the end zone, and it's Stokey Williams coming out with it at the 19, lunges to the 20. First down. Now let's see about UCLA and a drive here. Last week, those of you who follow SC know the story very well. Arizona was leading USC just prior to the half, and instead of running the clock out, they attempted to pass, and what happened was that Browner intercepted it, ran it back for a touchdown to give SC the lead at halftime, and they won by seven. First and 10, UCLA from the 20-yard line. They're going to stay on the ground, at least initially, and it's Danny Andrews who gets punched up. As far as timeouts are concerned, UCLA has two left. SC has one. I think the strategy, the wise strategy here, would be very cautious, be very careful, try to punch out a first down. If you can get up close to midfield with less than a minute to play, use your timeouts and go to your two-minute offense. But right now, let the clock wind down. The momentum is definitely with Southern Cal. 142, 141, 140 remaining in the half. Chugging his way is Danny Andrews over the left side out to the 26-yard line. It'll be third down and about four. How about that in the fourth quarter? It is 24 to three, and I guess it's the altitude among other things. They're playing at Air Force. Well, Kenny Hatfield played for me. He's a coach at Air Force, and he told me they were going to beat Notre Dame last week. I didn't much believe him, but maybe he knew what he's talking about. And Duke, what an upset that is. Ben Bennett, their quarterback at Duke, must have had a sensational game against North Carolina. Good season for the Blue Devils. Third down, five, UCLA from the 26-yard line. It's Andrews to the outside. He's got the first down, and they'll run him out of bounds near the 37-yard line. Joey Browner making the stop. So that's exactly what the Bruins were looking for. Keep possession, get that first down. Now they've got 57 seconds, and if they want, they can kill the clock. I would look for them to go to their two-minute offense now. I don't think they will try to to kill the clock at first down gave them a little momentum got them a little bit out of the danger territory and I think that uh, with enough comp confidence in Ramsey he'll start uh, moving the ball down the field Kevin Nelson now in a tailback Andrews has carried nine times for 72 yards and they will go to the air Ramsey finding everybody covered scrambling gets out to the 42 yard line that's a pickup of five it'll be second down and five Hopper had uh, Townsell, the wide receiver, covered on the deep pattern. Uh, they were going for the downs, and uh, Hopper has tremendous speed. Just a sophomore, 4-5, and he was playing very deep and had him covered. There was a little bit of confusion there as to whether or not UCLA wanted to take the timeout. They kept looking over toward the bench, and then Terry finally said, OK, give him the T sign, and we'll stop it with 38 seconds to go in the first half. So one timeout now remaining for UCLA. Terry Donahue. 38 years old. He took over when he was just 32 at UCLA. They used to criticize Donahue for a conservative offense. The Bruins ground dominant. And then this year, all of a sudden, they go to the air and they go to the air to the extent that they've rewritten the record book. And they have become a very exciting football team. Well, Tom Ramsey, uh, the quarterback, uh, is number one in career at UCLA and passes attempted, passes completed, 412. 
Uh, he's had intercepted 34. He's thrown 50 touchdown passes. Coming up Friday night, the WBC World Heavyweight Championship from the Astrodome in Houston. Larry Holmes undefeated. 40 and 0, 30 knockouts, defending his title. It'll be his 13th title defense against Randall Tex Cobb. You'll see it at 9 o'clock Eastern. The Rose Bowl in Pasadena. UCLA leading 17 to 10. Second down and five for the Bruins from the 42-yard line. Townsell in motion. Give it to Andrews on the ground. He's going nowhere. It'll be third down and seven. Ricky Gray and Byron Darby making the tackle. Southern Cal didn't fall for that particular formation. When, South, when UCLA went right in for tight, they uh, came in with a goal line type defense and stopped it. And UCLA has taken another timeout. So that ate up nine seconds. 29 seconds now remaining in the first half. Now I'll go back uh, to what you were talking about with Arizona and Southern Cal. There were five seconds on the clock when uh, Arizona took time out. John Robinson was shocked. He said, I was headed for the dressing room. I said, what are they taking time out for? He said, well, I'll come back and watch it. And then the, the quarterback from Arizona threw, and then he saw Brown to catch it. He said, well, you know, we'll go ahead and dress him. And he said, I saw he had a clear sailing. He said, I want to help, help, want to help him down the field. He took it in and scored and put him ahead, and the momentum changed dramatically for the second half. Final score of that one was 48 to 41. And as we mentioned, UCLA last week beating Stanford 38-35. Here, 17-10 Bruins, third down, seven from the 40. Bruins are now out of timeouts. Ramsey over the middle at the 40-yard line to Kevin Nelson, drops the ball there. He fumbles it, and Browner had it. after Browner lays a hit on him. I know UCLA was just going, watch how quick, watch the release of Ramsey. Boom, he's throwing that ball right down the middle. There's the receiver wide open. And Browner, number 47, hits him and knocks him loose. And Brewer, number 41, is right there for the recovery. SC now from the 35-yard line. Trojans have one timeout left with 21 seconds remaining. They go into the air. We've got a penalty marker down to the outside and incomplete. Looking for the back Anthony Gibson. 16 seconds now remaining. Blanchard Montgomery was putting the pressure on Tinsley. And we'll see about the call. It's been a relatively penalty-free game to this point. John Presley indicates holding against SC. I would think that uh, UCLA would accept the penalty. The, the downs are not going to make any difference. The extra down, they might as well move them back as far as they as they can. That's exactly the case. Bring it back to the 25. Use of hands. Offense, 10 yards, still first down. At the 25, 16 seconds. Remaining of the half, a first down for the Trojans. Now well, they'll run it out now. Staying on the ground. Giving it to Gibson, and that should do it for the first half. So USC, after trailing by 14, getting a very big break with 2.08 remaining in the half on the fumble by Ramsey, cashing in, pulling to within seven. Robinson and the Trojans heading back after a very interesting first half. We play 30 at the Rose Bowl at 17 to 10 UCLA. And we'll be back with today's halftime activities after this message about an upcoming show on ABC and a word from our local stations. Back at the Rose Bowl as we start the second half. The USC Trojans will put it in the air. UCLA on top, 17 to 10. Again, for late tuners in as far as the bowl situation is concerned in regard to this game. UCLA still with an outside chance of going to the Rose Bowl game. If they win, if Washington State beats Washington today, and then if Arizona beats Arizona State, the Bruins could go. Otherwise, it looks like they're going to Honolulu on Christmas Day for the Aloha Bowl. SC on Pro 
probation this year and next cannot go to a bowl game this year. Here are the stats for the for the uh, half. You can see that uh, USC has gained a little bit. They're they're up to 163 to 206. The big turnover, the fumble uh, by UCLA right in closing part moments of the half let uh, USC score. The time of possession UCLA only 12:55. That's one number that the coaches will watch very carefully. They need to keep the ball. Jordan's kick in the direction of Doki Williams out from the four to the ten to the fifteen and hammered down at the eighteen yard line. Let's take a look at the defense now. Brian Luff, the left tackle for Southern California. Achiko is shaken up but back in. And Byron Darby had a good first half. The linebackers, Del Rio's only a sophomore and he's outstanding. Ricky Gray, team's leading tackler inside. Tim Sullivan. Also an inside backer. The other side, you've got Keith Browner, brother of Joey, who plays in the secondary. First and 10, UCLA, from the 18-yard line. And it's Danny Andrews starting the second half to the right side, across the 20 to the 21-yard line. And the secondary, Troy West. What a name for a Trojan. Darrell Hopper at the other corner. Joey Browner out of Atlanta. And Tony Brewer. Number 41, junior from Los Angeles. Good high jumper. His best six feet nine. Second down. Seven. UCLA from the 21-yard line. Toa Saipali is the other running back alongside Andrews. He stays in the block. Ramsey, after looking one way, goes the other, and it's deflected away by Troy West. West getting a hand on it. Carney was the intended receiver going down sideline. Troy West, number nine, is one of the real key players in this defense. Made a fine uh, defense play. Tom Ramsey with Bruno and Andrews are doing a lot of shifting in the offensive backfield at the running back spots. The guys up front, Bergman the tight end, number 94. Townsell is wide left, Carney wide right, and Ramsey going to the air, flushed out of the pocket, throwing on the run, throwing in, out of bounds. Intended for Bergman. Just a great play by Ramsey to get rid of the ball. He, he looked like uh, they, he was going to be sacked for a big loss, but once again, the momentum USC gained with that late touchdown in the first half. It was very evident there. Back to kick. Unife for UCLA, Kevin, good, high, deep kick, and it backs up Browner, who drops it and covers it at the 29-yard line. So I see, down by seven, working against this defensive alignment. Morgan, the nose guard, is in the middle. Number 40, Mike Barbie, the defensive tackle from Sacramento. Delacono made a couple of big plays in the first half. Montgomery was the tailback for Elway in high school. Knowles had, Knowles had a good first half. And Leone outside, number 33, recruited from Pennsylvania. First down at the 29-yard line. Gibson starts off as the eye back, drops the ball, and the fumble at the 28-yard line is recovered by, as we wait for the call, we just saw was a penetrating defense that got into the backfield and tackled the tailback before he was could receive the ball from the quarterback. Well, and the freshman from Burlingame in Northern California on first down, it's Danny Andrews. And we've got a couple of penalty flags. Here's, here's a look, another look at the fumble. But turn back and hand the ball to Gibson, but just as he, you no, know, the ball just slipped right through. Faulty ball handling. Very careless, this part on the uh, uh, Gibson number 24. Two penalty markers were thrown seconds apart. We could have two separate penalties here. Let's wait and see. Presley will tell us. 
offense. They offset. It's still first down. That's it. Offsetting penalties. Holding against the Bruins. Face mask call against the Trojans. Well, the replay the play again. First down. Bruins third in the nation in scoring. Fourth in yardage. Fifth in passing, averaging almost 300 yards per game in the air. Brian Wiley and Kevin Nelson, the running back tandem here. As again, we go first and 10 from the 29-yard line. Ramsey over the middle, too long, intended for Nelson. And Ramsey knew that Kevin was right there. Just overthrown. Troy West, number nine, the uh, strong safety was covering Nelson out of the backfield, and you can see the poise. Watch, watch uh, Ramsey just wait until Nelson gets in behind Troy West, number nine. He was open, but the ball was a little bit high. Tough throw. A, run, a receiver running away from you like that is really tough on the quarterback. Andrews and Saipali are the running backs. Ramsey, 8 out of 15 for 105. To the 27-yard line, stopped by John Harvey. Trojan defense doing its job in the secondary, and Ramsey had nobody to go to. Third down, call it eight at the 27. Once again, the nickel defense. Williams coming in as the fifth back to Southern Cal. Harvey going out. Third down, seven from the 27. Fake the draw. Ramsey stepping up, moving to his left. Tucking it in, sliding down to the 24. It'll be fourth down. Achika and Sullivan were there to end the play. Again, it was a coverage sack on the quarterback. Receivers expertly covered by the defensive back. No one to throw to, and the three-man rush forced the sack. It's Frank Bruno who needs the attention on the left arm or shoulder as the Bruins set up for the field goal attempt here from the 32-yard line. John Lee at an angle, 42-yard attempt. Rick Neuheisel to hold. Spot is good, and the kick, likewise. Lee with a second field goal. So after the SC fumble, the Bruins come up with three to stretch the advantage. 12.38 to go. Third quarter, UCLA 20, SC 10. Back to receive for the Trojans. Number 47 is Joey Browner. And he'll be flanked by Anthony Gibson. For the Bruins to kick off. And UCLA on top by 10. It's 20 to 10. Bruins. Kent Potter from the near hash mark. Putting it in the air. In Browner's direction. But Joey has no chance. Trojans coming out to the 20. 12 minutes, 38 seconds remaining. There's Lee, the freshman from Downey, who has now kicked 14 field goals this season, just one shy of Peter Bormeister's school record established in 1978. John Robinson, who's been through scenes like this many times. See, yeah, many times he's come out on the long end, too, when it was all over. Very calm. He, he knows what he wants to do. It's just a matter of whether he can pull it off. First down. Tinsley faking. Coming out to the near side and incomplete. There was good coverage on the play. Timmy White, who's been shut out today, was the intended receiver covered by Lupe Sanchez. It's interesting because between Simmons and White of SC and Carney and Townsell of UCLA, we're looking at four of the finest receivers in the country, and yet they've all been basically shut down. Carney's caught one, and I think Simmons caught one, and the other two haven't caught any. Very surprising. On second down, they give it to Kennedy Pola. He is stopped after a gain of one. Interesting story there. Pola, born in American Samoa. He was born the day that John Kennedy was assassinated, November 22nd, 1963, and named after the late president. Air Force upsetting Notre Dame, 30 to 17. Now, I think we should mention uh, UCLA's going to the six-back coverage. Walter Lang is the extra back. And on third down and eight, Tinsley goes down back at the 14-yard line. Kenny Page, number 96. Back up down lineman. He's the man. 
gets his first tackle of the day. He plays just on this unit. The the dime defense with six backs. They put him in as a down lineman and let him go. So he has one job to do, and he did it. That's right. That's all he works on for the week, I guess. David Pryor, the punter, standing at the goal line. Lupe Sanchez back for UCLA, and that's a good kick. Backing Sanchez up from the 35-yard line, spinning, and out to the 40-yard line he goes. First down coming up there when we come back with 11 minutes and 14 seconds remaining in period number three. The Rose Bowl in Pasadena for the first time ever hosting the SCUCLA game. Bruins lead 20 to 10, early third quarter, and UCLA with a first down at its own 40-yard line. Ramsey off the play fake, drifting to his right, running out of room and running out of bounds. Byron Darby with the escort service. Since the first quarter, Ramsey has been held in check with his passing. Uh, the receivers of uh, uh, UCLA have not been able to get open to separate themselves from the defensive backs, and the three or four-man rush has been getting to Ramsey. They're going to have to correct that or they'll it'll be fatal for them. Second down. Eight. Double tight end set up for the Bruins with Townsell wide to the left, and they give it to Andrews. Bumps his way out to the 46-yard line. So it'll be third down and four. The tendency for coaches right here leading by 10 points in a big game like this is go conservative. Their defense has played pretty darn good at UCLA. Why shouldn't they be a little bit conservative? Not too much, but not take any chances. They throw the ball, throw safe patterns, then punt the ball, let Southern Cal go the distance if they can. Third down, four from the 46-yard line. Ramsey sending his back down into the pattern complete at the 46-yard line. Danny Andrews coming out of the backfield was the intended receiver. So they come up short. They'll kick again and try to pin SC deep. Both Southern Cal and UCLA's defenses are beginning to dominate a little bit since midway in the, in the second quarter. Kevin Bunafe, that name means good faith in Spanish. And they've got a lot of faith in him. He's done his job through his career here. This one, a low line drive kick, and a fair catch is called for and made by Browner at the 17-yard line. So the Trojans trying to come back the other way. 10 minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the third quarter. If you join the slate, Southern Cal is playing with a backed up quarterback, actually backed up tailback and fullback. They're somewhat limited in the style of play because of having to cut back. So it'll be tough for them to make as many snaps as it's going to take to go 82 yards. Third quarter at Texas Stadium, Arkansas and SMU tied at 10. Gibson has room to the 29-yard line. Don Rogers coming up to make the stop number seven. Washington leading Washington State. They've stretched it out now to 17-7. The Huskies will win a third successive trip to Pasadena with a victory at Pullman today. The first down here, first and 10 at the 28-yard line. Going back to the Washington game, this is the fourth time Don James has taken his team to the Rose Bowl since he's been at Washington just eight years. Tailback is Todd Spencer. Two or maybe three. Morgan making the stop. Boy, would they like to have that fella <laughs> in their lineup today. O.J. Simpson. With friends looking on. From SC to the Bills to the 49ers to the movies. And then at the Rose Bowl today. Watching his alma mater trying to mount something as they trail by 10. Tinsley short over the middle at the 36-yard line. It's Simmons, who normally doesn't run routes like that, had him in a cluster right over the middle for a short game out to the 36-yard line. Ted Talda, the backfield coach at Brigham Young for a number of years, has moved over to Southern Cal, and that was his influence. That was a delayed pass underneath that Southern Cal has not thrown until this year. Third down, two. They take both wide receivers out. And it's a double tight end setup with Boyer and McCool. Kamanai in motion. Pitch it back 
to Spencer. Doesn't do it. Mike Gurdon coming up to make the stop. So again, it's the UCLA defense somewhat maligned. I guess really comparatively speaking, they've been so potent offensively this year. There's a tendency occasionally to overlook the UCLA defense, even when they turn in good performances. And it's been a basically good one thus far today. What they've done is they've avoided the big play. That's what has hurt them in the other games that they've had trouble, long gainers. They're trying to eliminate them and gives them a better chance. David Pryor's kick is fielded by Sanchez, and he spun down. Back at his own 24-yard line by Wayne Pickett. Bruins start from there. 8.05 remaining third quarter. It's the Bruins by 10. 8.05 to go, third quarter. Al Michaels and Frank Broyles with you from the Rose Bowl. UCLA leading USC 20 to 10, and Tom Ramsey's number is reflected there. However, in this half, Ramsey's drawn a blank. He's 0 for 4 through the air, and they start on the ground and find nothing at all for Kevin Nelson through the middle. Ricky Gray in on the tackle. It'll be second down, 10, just outside the 25-yard line. South Cal defense continues to snuff out the running by UCLA that was so successful early in the ball game. Here's the Bruin offensive line, the size, Eatman. You can see they're not quite as big as uh, Southern Cal's offensive line. Second and nine from the 25-yard line. Ramsey throwing over the middle, and again, overshooting his intended receiver, Danny Andrews, who got by a couple of linebackers, and then the pass was a run. So Ramsey, who was on his mark early, and the Bruins averaging almost 300 yards a game. It's interesting, this season, the Bruins have had six 300-yard passing games. In the prior 63 years, only four times had they thrown for 300 or more yards. So the change of philosophy in Westwood reflected right there. Third down nine from the 25-yard line. Ramsey stepping up again, rolling and still looking, and finally throwing and incomplete and against the SC defense with good coverage. Paul Bergman was the intended receiver. Funny unit coming on. Ron Williams had the coverage that time. John Robinson told me that uh, when Southern Cal got hurt on defense, they were playing man for man and blitzing in other games. They were not going to do that unless the Southern UCLA was threatening the goal line. And you can see they've done a great job against Tom Ramsey, particularly in the last quarter and a half. Only eight for 18 so far. Ramsey now 0 for 6 in the half. Munafe to do the punting. He's a sophomore. Browner, single safety, waiting for it. Fields at the 32-yard line, looking for a block to the outside. But there are too many blue shirts, and out he goes at the 37-yard line. So all defense thus far for both teams in the second half after a 42-yard punt, 7 minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Southern Cal uh, has to make most of their yards running or all short passes. Tinsley doesn't have that strong arm. He's very good at, at possession type passes, short, keeping the ball, keeping the drive alive, and, uh, but he's not good going deep. Trojans coming up. First and 10. Spencer and Pola, the running backs. Fake to Spencer. And look out. Tinsley down to the 25. That's Delicano, number 39. A sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, making another big play. Delicano, number 39, was a tailback. When he came aboard, watch him as he, as he rushes in from the right of your screen. You'll see him, the quickness that he has from the left of the screen, excuse me, and uh, makes the sack. It looked like he was untouched, but he has that quickness having been a tailback in high school. Second down, 20 from the 26-yard line, Anthony Gibson. Taking it out to the 32. You mentioned you recruited Delicano. You wanted him to go to Arkansas. He's from Baton Rouge. He comes to mind, too. Why wouldn't he go to LSU? What made him go out west? Well, those are the things that UCLA and Southern Cal have been able to do over the years is pick off a great player out of this state and then another state, and it uh, supplements the great athletes that they have here in Southern California. Third down. 13. Trojans at the 33. With White in motion, 
Tinsley going over the middle. Simmons makes the grab at the 39-yard line. Don Rogers making the stop. So Simmons has caught a couple, but they haven't done any damage. He's been running over the middle for a couple of yards here and a couple of yards there, and they're shy of the first down by plenty. Well, the linebackers want to force everything to be thrown in front of them, and they can come up and make the tackle. And you can see Rogers, the free safety, is playing kind of a game, and he's the one that came up and made the play. He's a leading tackler for uh, UCLA also. Simmons has caught three today, but for only 29 yards, there's a low snap, but getting it away. Pryor, and it's a good kick. Fielding Disaster. So UCLA maintains possession deep in its own territory. 50-yard kick by 15 to go in the third. Bruins still by 10 over the Trojans. Five minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter. UCLA 20, USC 10. And it's the Bruins with the ball at the nine-yard line. First and 10. Tom Ramsey still looking for his first completion in this half. Gives it to Dan Starting to the outside, nothing doing. It'll be second down and ten. Update from New York now. Let's check in with Jim Lampley. Jeff. Washington likes to keep its followers in suspense. This touchdown by Washington State, a five-yard pass from Cleet Casper to Michael Peterson, has narrowed the Washington lead now to 17-14 in the third quarter. The Rose Bowl still an open issue. Alan? All right, Jim, and it's a very, very tough to play at Pullman, obviously. We've got a penalty on the last play, and it's a face pass call against Southern California. How about uh, the Cougars, given the Huskies all they can handle? Well, Jim Walden is a very resourceful coach himself, and uh, I'm sure that, got, uh, as you mentioned, they got him in Pullman. That is a yes, place you want him. Face pass, defense, five-yard penalty, and still first down. That might have been the break that uh, UCLA needed to get out of the hole. Once again, we should say UCLA has to run the football to establish their passing, uh, and they have not been able to run it in the last two quarters. That was not a flagrant foul. Five-yard penalty, first down and five from the 14-yard line. Cephas is in the game. That's Carney in motion. And they give it to Cephas, who's the short yardage tailback, and he gets about four. Stopped by Tim Sullivan, number 48. Well, listening to either a game in this area, perhaps this one, maybe Radio Moscow. I don't know, Frank. Well, you know, a lot of people listen to the game they see. That's become quite popular to get uh, get all the information that they don't know that uh, at KC that happens when they see the state, especially in Los Angeles. Dr. Stadium is always in stereo. It's third down. Should have said one. Third down and one. And it's Cephas close to a first. Second down. Second down, right. Penalty. <clears throat> close enough to bring in the chains. They, when when you, Southern uh, Cal punted the ball deep, but once again, David Pryor showed just how valuable he is to the uh, Southern Cal team with his punting. A 50-yarder, no return, backing him up. Very close. Can't ask any better than that. A first down with four minutes and five seconds to go in the third period. Al, I wanted to say a, a good punt and a good defense have won a many a championship. <laughs> if your quarterback doesn't cost you anything, he can just hold on. Kevin Nelson and Frank Bruno, a tandem of running backs with Townsell in motion. To the short side of the field, it's Nelson. Nelson losing the football. And waiting for the call from the officials now. Nelson giving up the ball. But apparently UCLA will maintain possession. There's been no indication yet that it is SC's ball. Jack Del Rio came out of the pack with it. And as you can tell, with Del Rio jumping around, that the officials say that Nelson was either down or the Bruins came up with it at the 21-yard line. As we look at John Robinson, his team is playing just about the way he wants to right now. If he could just force the punt, he'd have good field position with a chance to score. Second down, nine, ball at the 21-yard line. Brian Wiley in alongside Andrews. 
Ramsey to the air, still looking for his first completion of the half. He gets it, a short one over the middle, and out to the 25 goes Danny Andrews. Shy of a first down by about five. Let's take a look at that fumble. Well, Nelson, number three, has the ball. This is the play that they made a lot of yardage in, but in the first quarter, <coughs> the, the ball is out before he hit the ground, it looks to me like. Didn't oh, you absolutely, absolutely. Now, there's Del Rio, and he's the one who winds up with it, and you can see why he was so hopping mad. Ball popped out before his knee touched. Third down five from the 24-yard line. Ramsey incomplete out of the 32-yard line. Going for Cephas, and Cephas was falling down. The pass wasn't that accurate anyway. Well, we, uh, UCLA has departed from their strategy. They've been averaging 15 yards of reception in the first 10 ball games. Now they've gone back to nickel and dime passes, and it's not their style of play. Beautiful to kick. A high hanging kick. Browner takes it and goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Byron Darby put the rush on Unifay that time. That's a good point, Frank, in, in the sense that the Bruins have been a big play team. Townsell has been averaging over 18 yards per reception this season. Then you've got Doki Williams, who's the backup wide receiver. We have not seen him in that role today. He's caught eight passes this season, but for an average of 29 yards a catch, they've been going long. And four touchdowns. Half of his receptions have been for touchdowns. They've changed and departed from their things they do best. First down for Southern Cal from the 37-yard line. And they give it to Anthony Gibson. He's out of bounds. Out near the 44. Run out by Blanchard Montgomery and stopping the clock with 2.28 remaining in the third quarter. The strategy that uh, Terry Donahue is using with a 10-point lead, meaning that Southern Cal has got to get at least two scores, a touchdown and a field goal. At least uh, they're playing conservative, playing the kicking game until their defense proves that the game stops them again. Then they'll have to start wheeling and dealing again. On second down and three, moving through the middle is Anthony Gibson, and we've got a penalty marker after the close of the play, which was enough to net a first down. Sullivan for the tackle. If it is against UCLA, it will be tacked on after the yardage game, which would really be hurt. Would hurt the Bruins. Face mask, Bruins. Rex Gray was the guilty party, 57. Linebacker. Incidental face mask, meaning just a five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty, defense. Grasping, holding, or turning is a 15-yard penalty. First down at the 46-yard line for the Trojans. 2.17 to play, third quarter. Spencer back in at the I-back spot. He gets to the 44-yard line. Stopped by Carl Morgan, number 40. When UCLA won this game two years ago, Carl Morgan had a sensational football game when they held Marcus Allen to just uh, 92 yards, one of the few times that Marcus didn't rush for over 100 yards. Possession by passing by Kinsley, 9 to 14. Second down and seven from the 43-yard line. Spencer again. He gets maybe a yard to the 42. Lee Knowles and Neil Delacano ending the play. And it will be third down and six coming up from the 42-yard line with 118, 117 on the clock counting down in the third quarter. Still plenty of time, but this is a pretty big play right here for USC. And UCLA has substituted some down linemen and defensive backs on the long yardage play. They bring in Lang, they bring in Page, who made a big play off the line before on third down and six. They start white in motion, Tinsley on a straight drop. Going and incomplete. They had Simmons crossing over the middle, but he was covered well. Mike Durden was right there. So SC forced the punt again. Good call by the defense, having six backs. It allowed a 
Defensive back Durden with 4-5 speed to cover the receiver rather than a linebacker. That's advantage of the six backs in the game. Tinsley is now 9 out of 15 for only 84 yards. So the Trojans averaging a little bit more than 9 yards per completion. Dave Pryor to punt. Fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line by Tom Sullivan, who had dropped back. Instead of Sanchez, they had Sullivan back there just in case SC had any trickery in the seat in mind. Once again, UCLA is starting to put the ball in very dangerous territory where they have to be extremely careful. I'm not sure that they'll stick to the, that same game plan right now, just being conservative on first and second down and waiting to third down out the throw. Let's uh, Southern Cal play uh, the best defensive teams they can. They get in a rhythm. They're too stereotyped right now. First down for UCLA as they start this drive from the 12-yard line. Andrews threads out to the 15-yard line. Second and seven coming up. And again, here's Jim Lampley in New York. Washington is in trouble in Spokane. This seven-yard touchdown run by Tim Harris has now given Washington State a 21-17 lead, jeopardizing the Huskies' Rose Bowl hopes. Back to Al Michaels. All right, Jim, and that's going to shock a lot of people, but if you've been around Pac-10 football long enough, you know how tough it is to win sometimes in Pullman. Why do they make that announcement here and see what it does? Oh, see a late team. Oh, they haven't done it yet. Second down and eight as Ramsey goes back, throws over the middle, and it's dropped. Brian Wiley, number 22, was thinking about running up field before the ball got to his hands. Once again, the nickel and dime passes. Not bad strategy from this place on the field. Throw the ball over the defensive line, but in front of the linebackers. Keep it low where if it's incomplete, it goes right to the gap. I mean, if they don't catch it, it goes to the ground. Incomplete. Again, as far as the Rose Bowl game is concerned, if UCLA wins here, and let's say Washington State, and they just made the announcement, that's why the crowd's going wild. If State wins, then you've got to wait a week because if Arizona State wins next week against Arizona, the Sun Devils go to the Rose Bowl. On third down and eight, the pass is incomplete at the 16-yard line intended for Bruno as the third quarter expires. So when the fourth period commences, the Bruins will be punting from deep in their own territory, and the Trojans may very well wind up with decent field position. We've played three at the Rose Bowl. It's 20 to 10, Bruins. Back with the fourth quarter and... In Pasadena, Al Michaels with Frank Broyles, Kelly Hayes spotting, George Hill handling the stats as we start the fourth quarter. A UCLA punt with Unifay start standing at the goal line. SC hopeful of winding up in decent field position, and it's a beautiful kick that backs Browner all the way to his own 30-yard line. Looking for room to the outside, comes back to the 40, and is run out of bounds at about the 43. So near midfield for USC to begin this drive. 20 to 10, the Bruins on top, a 56-yard punt. At a most opportune time for the Bruins. Once again, the kicking game got him out of a little bit of a trouble. Brown made a good run to get back some of that yardage. Once again, Southern Cal is starting in good field position as we look at our score getting the fourth quarter. And another score that you might be remotely interested in is the athletic director at Arkansas. There's five minutes to play in that game, and Arkansas leads 17 to 10. SMU is unbeaten coming in. From the 41-yard line on first down, it is Todd Spencer to the outside, to the 45, to the 50, and a first down to the Bruin 47-yard line. Like Delicano, number 39, with the extra grab. Hey, Todd Spencer makes a sensational run, even though it was only for about 12 yards. There was nothing there as we look at the call. Nothing there, and he broke all the way out the backside. Once again, the cutbacks being the favorite way to make yardage for Southern Cal. All the way out the backside of the defense. Face mask call, non flagrant incidental penalty against Delicano, so it's a five yarder. Five yard penalty defense. First down. Spencer got 12. He's picked up 63 yards on 17 carries today. Last year had 86 yards on 12 carries against the Bruins. From the 42, first and 10 Trojans. Gibson back in. A yard or so.
Second and nine. Good by the defense. First down. If you can hold Southern Cal to one yard, you've got a chance to force them into the passing game before they make the first down. That's what their game plan should be right now. Make them throw the football, but stop that power slot, home slot that they are so capable of. USC second down nine from the Bruin 41. Changing the play at the line, Kinsley. Gibson to the outside with room. He takes it to the 33-yard line. Shy of a first down by one. Third and one upcoming. One more update now from New York. Here's Jim Lampley. Allen, Arkansas has broken the tie in Dallas. The touchdown set up by this remarkable 23-yard catch, Tom Jones to Gary Anderson. After Anderson made the catch out, Keith Jackson said, you got to have some gizzard to hold on to that one. It's 17-10 Arkansas. Al? <laughs> Appropriately so. Third down and one at the 33-yard line. Gibson, he has a first down. Gets inside the 30 to the 29, and Don Rogers makes the tackle. So USC mounting a drive with 13.05 to play in the game. They're down by 10. From, from, from a low angle, let's watch the block to that offensive line. They had to get low and pry open a hole, and you see it right there. As uh, Gibson pops right in behind the line for the first down. Southern Cal, with their powerful running game, begin to dominate most teams in the fourth quarter. UCLA are going to have to grab a hold of some grass to stop it. Tensley giving it to Gibson. Big hole. He gets to the 20. He gets to the 15-yard line. Lee Knowles making the stop. So the Trojans on the move took over near midfield after the punt. All the way down now to the 15 with 12, 37 to play. Watch the block. You can see the play starts to the right. But this is what Southern Cal does so effectively. They just sustain their blocks and the freedom of choice of running by the tailback makes the game. Bruce Matthews cleared the lane on that one. The All-America guard, 16-yard line. Spencer is the tailback. First and 10. Spencer, the ball carrier. Another hole inside the 10. He gets to the 8. Tom Sullivan making the stop. UCLA should take time out. Spin one of their timeouts. Gather themselves up right here. Watch the blocking of the offensive line. Right now you can see the blocking right there. Number 72, Mosbar. Number 74, Murray. Cross blocking and opening up the hole on the cutback. At the eight, second down, two. Tom and I in motion. Spencer again, not this time, however, and again it's Delacano 39, who spent a good deal of the day in the SC backfield. And he's only a sophomore, 6'2", 220. They shut, uh, UCLA shut off the cutback, forcing Spencer to try to go outside, and that's not their, their way of doing things. And, uh, of course, it, UCLA threw him for a loss. So now third down and four for the Trojans at the 10. Critical play for SD. Gibson down that let's see where they'll spot it. I think about the seven is where his knee touched, and that is where they'll spot it. Knowles and Whalen made the tackle. It's going to be fourth down and one. Now Robinson, he's going to have to have a touchdown and a field goal. Does he go for the field goal now, or does he go for the touchdown? That's the decision he's got to make. Evidently, he's going for the touchdown. He has the momentum. Offensive line doing a great job of blocking. He wants the seven right here. He's got a double tight end set up. He's got Gibson in as the eye back. Coming on in motion. They need a yard. And I, it's close. I think they have it. Ending the spot, and he gave him. It was that accurate spot, but I believe it's the first down. The chain is just about exactly on the six-yard line. It looks like they have it from this angle. Once again, the key block was by a freshman, goal of the tailback, knocking the defensive end out, trying open a little running room for the tailback. So here come the chains. They see the first and goal for UCLA ball. First and goal. 
Here's the key block. Watch the fullback. He was a freshman, number 37. He's going to collide with the safety man right there, Dirk, and uh, gets a tie at least, and there's enough room for the first down to be made. 10 minutes, 24 seconds remaining in the game. As the Trojans come up to the line. Bruins on top, 20 to 10. Dominov in motion. Pitch it on a sweep to the right side. Gibson stopped by Montgomery. That's a sensational play by Montgomery. He's the linebacker. He saw the play develop, and he shot the gap and made the play. Otherwise, I believe it would have been a touchdown. Number 27, Montgomery, the linebacker. No game. Put it right at the six. Second down goal, USC. Tailback is Gibson. Pitch it to him. Behind Cola. And again, the Bruin defense, very, very tough. Mark Ferguson, and again, Montgomery was in on that play. Ferguson, a senior from Santa Ana. Montgomery, a senior from Granada Hill. At the five, he got one third and goal. You see the block and how fierce the activity gets right there. Watch the tailback cut back in 27. The linebacker is going to shoot the gap and makes the play holding for a short game. Third down and goal. They set up in a slot right. Sends Simmons in motion. And Tinsley to the air. Throwing, and it's knocked down in the end zone by Delicano on a pass intended for Boyer. That's a sensational play by that young sophomore. Could have, he had the ball, but he just didn't hold it. Could have been an easy interception. Watch the play. Del Cano is a defensive end, linebacker. He's dropping off on the trips. The three receivers force him to drop off and cover. Watch him right here. Pull up. He has the ball, but he cannot hold on to it. Falls to the ground incomplete. Now they need 10, so they'll try to get three here. 21-yard field goal attempt from the 11-yard line. Steve Jordan, an easy chip shot for him here. And the kick is good. So Jordan, who kicked the 44-yarder back in the first quarter, pulls USC to within seven. We have the makings of a wild finish, 8.51 to go. It's the Bruins on top by seven. Eight minutes and 51 seconds remaining. SC coming up with a field goal after a drive that took more than six minutes. The kick is taken in the end zone by Doki Williams, and he won't come out with it. The Bruins coming out to begin this series at the 20-yard line. First and 10, eight minutes, 51 seconds remaining in the game. What? Washington has picked up three. They now trail Washington State. Third quarter, 21 to 20, up in the Palouse. Homer Smith, the signal caller for UCLA, has got some tough decisions coming up right here. The toughest of the entire ball game. And Arkansas and SMU are now tied 17-17 with two minutes left in that game with Dallas. Bruins from the 20. Ramsey off the play fake on first down, throwing to Bruno. He gets four. Tim Sullivan, 48, inside backer making the stop. Second down and six at the 24-yard line. Keeping the ball in bounds is very important. Throwing in the middle is dangerous, but it's also helpful because it doesn't stop the clock if the, if the receiver should, should the receiver go out of bounds. Towns Elf is split to the left. Andrews is the tailback. Take the pitch, go over the middle, complete to the tight end at the 40-yard line. Tony Brewer. 
Meanwhile, digging in defensively is UCLA. Uh, the first play is Todd Spencer was the ball carrier, and he's thrown back close to the 50-yard line. That's Bruin, number 41, who made the hit. It knocked the ball loose from Howell, and Brown will recover. Loss of three on the last play, and it's second down and 13 for USC with 7.44 remaining in the game. UCLA ahead by seven. On second and 13, Kinsley rolling left. Throwing, and Simmons leaping, but he was covered well by Durden. Michael Durden, number 29, has made some big plays in this ball game, both in supporting the run, but watch Simmons, number 29, who is a, a premier pass receiver. Watch him go up. Now his body's extended. See how, at the time, he has the ball, but Durden just goes as high as he does and knocks it free. Incomplete. Third down, 13. Trojans at the 50-yard line. 7.30 to go. With White in motion. It's batted away. Guess who? Delacano, 39. There's an old saying by coaches, get a hand in the face of the quarterback and your pass defense will be successful. As a classic example, Kensley is only about 6'2", Delcano 6'3", right in front. Rushes up the middle, are really the most damaging. Watch him jump. Good athlete that he is. Knocks the ball down as the pass was intended for Timmy White, number six. Now Dave Fryer to punt, so after the golden opportunity presented to the Trojans, they can't move an inch. And Fryer's kick is a high kick, and a fair catch is called for and made at the nine-yard line by Tom Sullivan. It's UCLA starting deep in its own territory. A 40-yard kick, 7.19 to go. And UCLA leading 20 to 13. What a day for that fellow. Neil Delacano, sophomore number 39. Out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's helped get the ball back for his Bruins, who start this drive from their own 10-yard line. And it's Danny Andrews going through the middle. Out to the 12. The clock is running with seven minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the game. Gets two field goals. That's all we've had scoring in this second half. The defenses have really dominated, prevailed with outstanding pass coverages, really, both teams. Total yards, 239. UCLA, 261. Just like the family. Second down, eight from the 12. Andrews again, can't turn the corner. It's number 57, Keith Browner, making the tackle, the junior from Atlanta. What we're seeing now is a, a team going really into the stall type of play, which is a diff against their personalities, di different than the style they play. Even the running backs, Al, are covering up the ball, which is what they should do. I agree with you. They got to cover up the ball, and they're not really running with a reckless abandon that they did early in the ball game. The problem is, too, that if you don't get the first down, you're probably going to give SC decent field position because you're going to have to kick from deep in your own territory. You can see that Ramsey's had a black and white sort of day. Double covering both wide receivers. On third and eight, Ramsey with some room to the left side, but not enough for the first down. He stopped at the 15-yard line, running into Ricky Gray and Byron Darby. And he's bunged up a little bit, Al. Ramsey is not getting up very quickly. He's a tough individual. Believe me. Played his heart out. So Ramsey, at least if he's not too severely shaken up, will have a little bit of time because you've got a fourth down play upcoming. Perhaps if it's a case of just having the wind knocked out of you, he'll be able to recover on the bench. Looking ahead, if uh, Southern Cal should score, then they've got to pull off a two-point play, and the percentages in college football of success on a two-point play are less than 40%. About 37% of the time in college football, teams are successful with, the, with the, the conversion for two points. Donnie, you came out to take a look, and Ramsey, with a moment, appears to be all right. He'll walk off. He'll watch the defense take over. He's 11 out of 24 for 135 yards. Far below his average for the season. But he's been very cautious. He hadn't been the wheeler-dealer type of player in this game. 
And uh, all of us tend to get conservative, players and coaches, in a game like this, particularly when you're ahead. Kevin Buniface had a good day, averaging 45 yards per kick. Low snap, no problem, though. However, the kick is an end-over-end -end line drive that bounces at the 50 and takes a very fortuitous UCLA bounce as it rolls dead at the 34-yard line. So it turns out to be not particularly artistic, but a good kick nonetheless. 5.28 to go as Ramsey is on the bench. Bruins by seven. We're back with five minutes and 28 seconds remaining at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. UCLA 20, USC 13, and the Trojans begin this drive from their own 34-yard line. First and 10. Scott Tinsley, the quarterback, turning and giving it to Todd Spencer. He gets out to the 35, a gain of one. So this game basically billed as UCLA's offense against USC's defense will come down at the very end to USC's offense against UCLA's defense. That's the way it usually works out when it gets into the fourth quarter. Carl Morgan, Morgan made a great play to stop the tailback to short yard on the last play. No start for UCLA. Second down and nine for the Trojans from the 35-yard line. The play fake going. He is a man open at the 49-yard line. It's Jeff Simmons, and that's as open as Simmons has been since the first quarter. He takes it to the 48 of UCLA. He, Simmons makes a strong move. It's going in the middle, and, of course, uh, potentially has good pack, good protection, has time, step forward, look how wide open he is. You see third number 29 had taken the inside fake. There was no need to because the safety man had it to the inside. He should have stayed outside and made the play uh, closer. 95 career catches ties him with Lynn Swan for second, back of only Randy Simran. From the 48-yard line, Gibson. About three, David Randall, number 64, making the stop. It's the second time uh, that the defense from the weak side have run around a block. Randall did on that occasion and got in, over in time to make the tackle. They spotted at the 46, call it second down, eight, four minutes, 25 seconds, clock running, remaining. Tensley, looking for White at the 31-yard line, and a first down. They go to Timmy White. They've been able to bottle White up today. White's the kind of guy that either has a great day or a terrible day, and sometimes has both in the same afternoon. Of course, White, number six, has the great speed. This type of pattern takes good pass protection because you're going to run deep, force deep, and then curl over in the middle. And the Sanchez was nowhere around. White just cradled the ball in, and USC has another first down. To elaborate on our thought about White, he's the kind of guy that makes the big catch and then comes back later and drops the ball. Dropped four last week. Caught four, dropped four. First and ten from the 32-yard line. Anthony Gibson to the 29-yard line. As far as the timeout situation is concerned, neither team has spent one in this half. They each have three. As you see the clock, 3.35 to go in the game, and the Bruins are hit by seven. I think that Southern Cal can stick to their knitting, mixing up passing and running. They're not in a position at this time that requires them to go into their passing offense unless they just want to. That's David Norrie, who along with Newhines, one of the backup quarterbacks for UCLA as Ramsey is still being tended to on the bench. Second down, six at the 28-yard line. Kinsley throwing over the middle and complete to the 15-yard line for a first down. Pat McCool, the tight end. Remember, they lost Cornwell, their number one tight end earlier. No rush, plenty of time. Tinsley just lets him have the ball. The safest pass in football. Tight end, screen to the left. The linebacker ran out. Tinsley hit the tight end. McCool scored three passes today, equaling his season total. First down from the 15-yard line. Give it to Gibson. He takes it to the 12-yard line. The clock showing 2.50 remaining in the game. SC and UCLA, and it can't be any other way. Typical finish. I've seen John Robinson win this game twice with less than a minute on the clock. I have seen some, uh, UCLA win it once with about three minutes on the clock. You saw the attendance crawl across on the board, 95-736. A few no-shows today. They sold over 100,000 seats. Second down, seven. Ball at the 12-yard line. Gibson again. Fumble at the 11-yard line. And a pile up there. But it looks like SC has it. 
They'll unscramble. The officials took time out to stop the clock right. until Bru they decide. Bruins don't look very optimistic, no. so they got to think it's SC that has maintained possession. And at the bottom of that pile is Bruce Matthews. It is SC's ball. Well, Gibson uh, is going to take the ball, cut back. He gets hit, and the ball pops out right there. But it bounces up to, the, to one of the, his teammates. Lee Knowles, the linebacker, number 85, is the one that knocked the ball loose with his headgear. You mean? Now, if we go back, the last time that the Southern Cal was here inside the 10, UCLA stopped him and forced the field goal. Durden is hurt. Mike Durden is shaken up, and so we have a timeout on the field while they work on the defensive back who's done a nice job in particular when he's been matched against Simmons today. Two minutes and 13 seconds now, remaining in the game. What, what that means, if Durden can't play, Jimmy Turner, who was the starter at that position, is already injured with a pull muscle, so they'll have to go to a third team of someone down who hadn't played very much uh, in a very critical situation like this with this game resting right here in this last series. Here's, here's a great shot I've seen yeah, so uh, many times. Right, you got to love Robinson. Yeah. So, a lot of guys really not necessarily lose their composure, but when they take a, a close-up shot of a coach on the sideline, sometimes it looks like things are a little disjointed, but John always looks that way, no matter what's happening. What he's got to do is give, uh, give uh, Tinsley some options. He'll call a pass or a run and let the defense dictate which one it is, but Tinsley's got to be ready for one or two options in the ballgame, and they might go to the substitute. Durden, see who takes Durden place and, and try to pick on him. So Durden, obviously an injury to the left leg. I guess Lang, number two, would come into the ball game. Yes, he's over on the corner. He's come in for the moment. So Mike Durden, senior from La Mesa, replaced by Lang, who started the last two games. And Lang is a fellow who has a lot of experience in the sense that last year when Lupe Sanchez was out for much of the season, it was Lang who took that spot, filled the role. That tells the story right there. Remember, the two-point play would give Southern Cal a victory if they were successful with it and if they can score here. As we look at Ramsey, who was bunged up on the last uh, possession, seems to be all right. Third down and six. See at the UCLA 11, they trail by seven. That's Timmy White coming into motion. Pinsley back to pass, under pressure, throws across the middle to White, he's inside the five, and down at the four at the first down. Don Rogers makes the tackle. So Scott Tinsley, that may, that may be the biggest pass that Scott Tins has ever thrown. Right across the middle, underneath the linebackers, you can see that Montgomery's going to miss him. Number 27, Montgomery has him short of the first down, but Timmy White's quickness springs him to for the first down. First down, SC at the four-yard line. Kamanai in motion. Gibson to the one-yard line. It's Blanchard Montgomery saving the touchdown. And he's shaken up. Montgomery. Right in the middle, making the initial hit. He's slow in getting up, but he's back up, number 27. Second down, goal at the 1, 110, 109 remaining. I see with all of its timeouts remaining. Coming out in motion again. Gibson is not. that John Robinson would take time out. But let's watch Montgomery, number 27. Critical right. Linebackers have got the fill. And he does. He hits, gets up right in the air and turns him around back to the own goal line. Great play by linebacker Montgomery. Clock still running 40 seconds, 39, 38, third down and goal. Coming on in motion again. Coming back to the outside. Again, they give it to Gibson. He doesn't get it. He's down inside the one. Ferguson and the clock shows 25 seconds. A drive that started at the SC 34 with 5.28 to go. SC's going to let the clock run down, take a timeout, and leave UCLA with no time at all. It's going to come down to one play and then a conversion attempt for two. So they'll take the timeout. They want to make sure the Bruins have no time at all remaining. Three seconds, they'll stop it right there. So Robinson says, and rightfully so, and John is a brilliant head coach. There's no question about it. He's thinking, I've got one play. I've got fourth down. It's going to come down to one. I'm going to let that clock run down and give UCLA no time at all. Look again at 
the UCLA defense, getting penetration. Carl Morgan hitting him first back in the backfield. Slowing gets him down enough to where the, his teammates could make the play. So it's fourth and one, one and a half. Does he run or does he throw? That is the big play. It all rests right here. The big ball. Didn't we say it had the elements of a great ball game? Oh, my goodness. It doesn't matter what the records are coming in every year. The same thing, very few blowouts in the recent history of this series. Now the 13 UCLA leading. Now if the if UCLA, Southern Cal does score, they still have got to be successful on a two-point play to win the ball game. There's no way that he would go for one and tie. There'd be no be useless. They've got to get into the end zone twice is what it amounts to. And remember, Scott Kinsley is the substitute quarterback. Played in this ball game two years ago, substituting for Gordon Adams, the starter, who was injured. Now the Southern UCLA defense is coming back out after talking to Terry Donahue. That's something you rarely see, too. The entire defensive unit went over to the bench. Now all 11 come back. This is it. Three seconds to go. Fourth and goal at the one. Now it's a little bit longer than the one, too. It's about one and a half. Gibson is the tailback. Cola is the fullback. Kamana sets up on a wing to the left. Kamana in motion. Kinsley's going to throw it into the end zone. He's got a man there for a touchdown. Mark Boyer. and he caught, cradled the ball in. Excellent call by John Robinson. There is no time left on the clock. The only thing remaining in the game is the outcome. The conversion coming up next. It's 20 to 19. Al, it's a bootleg pass. You can see that, that Tinsley could have run the ball in for the touchdown. He throws it and Boyer makes a great catch. Really, he had to turn around and uh, catch the ball. It wasn't just a simple uh, reception. The fake out in front is Matthews, number 66. Obviously, UCLA thought it was a run. We're going to run the ball. I said earlier, would he run or would he pass? One and a half yards for the score is a little bit far to run the ball. Good call. Now the big play. Here it is again. Fake both backs. You can see that everybody's right there. They sealed off the inside. You can see that uh, Cole juggles the ball a little bit, finally pulls it down. That is the only pass that Boyer has caught all season. <laughs> 20 to 19 UCLA. SC has taken another timeout, which they're allowed to do in this situation. The game, as far as the time is concerned, is over, and now UCLA has called a timeout on defense after the SC timeout. So Robinson says, all right, come on, I've got a little bit more time. Now the big decision, as we look at John Robinson, he's got to decide and try to anticipate what Southern Cal has done. You see the assistant coach call, they're drawing up the play, right there, two-point conversion. He's giving Tinsley some options. You don't go into a, game, a play like this with just one option. The quarterback has to be sure and get away from a bad play by changing it at the line of scrimmage to something that gives him a better chance. Now, Terry Donahue's trying to decide. He's got his defense over there. He's going to make the decision, do we rush or do we defend? This is the game of football checkers. Right here. 20 to 19, UCLA. No time remaining. It's over. This is the last play of the game, period. The two-point conversion. The Trojans break the huddle, come up to the three. Simmons started by going to the right, now goes to the left. He more likely go in motion to give him trips. He does. Three receivers to the right side. The play will go in that direction in all likelihood, and down he goes! The Bruins win it! Carl Morgan saving UCLA!
Trojans of USC, 20 to 19. Morgan, number 40. You're going to see, this is what we call a coverage sack. Tinsley does, has no one to throw. He's got time. Watch, he's got time, but the backs have done a great job, and here comes Morgan. That's what we call a coverage sack for a great victor. Two years ago, Al, I saw this as we look at it again. Number 40, Morgan. I saw Terry Donahue win this game and start crying. I start crying with him. I, we're so happy for him. His, this is his second victory over John Robinson. What a play. What a ball game. The UCLA Bruins winning it. Morgan picking up the save. 20 to 19 UCLA. We'll be back in the Rose Bowl after this. And the UCLA team is going over in front of the student body. You know, uh, UCLA has been the underdog. Southern Cal has dominated this. And Go ahead, Al. Our most valuable players are Chevy MVP, Scott Tinsley, the SC quarterback, and how about the game turned in by the linebacker, Neil Delacano, and each man's name, a $1,000 scholarship grant to the universities. And again, we're going to take another look now at the touchdown scored by the University of Southern California as time ran out to make it 20 to 19. Fourth down, a bootleg pass. You can see how wide open the receiver is. The quarterback, Kinsley, could have run or throw. He laid it up to McColl, the tight end. Touchdown. Now they have to go for two. They trail by one point. Two point conversion would give them the ball game. And uh, John Robinson took time out. UCLA then took another timeout. The defense stood over on the sideline, got the instructions, a four-man rush. They covered the receivers. Watch the key. The key that Tinsley has no one to throw to. No one to throw to. Then Morgan, the nose guard, number 40, breaks clean and ends the ball game with a victory for UCLA. Number 40, Carl Morgan. Meanwhile, all eyes now on Pullman, Washington, where it's 21-20 Washington State leading Washington four minutes to go. So the Bruins still have hope of winding up back here on January the 1st. There's Donahue, the Bruins winning it over the Trojans by a score of 20-19. to The goalpost is skew at the Rose Bowl and will return in just a moment. <laughs> 